<clears throat> You're looking live at Bremer Arena, home of the Edina Holiday Classic. It's the tradition Edina Holiday Classic right here on the stateofhockey.com, presented by Axe, available at Target stores. Now, Bart Archer, I'll tell you what, uh, this year, this time, something we look forward to each and every year. Yeah, and I can't say it enough. It didn't come quick enough, but I, I've always liked this tournament because always very uh, four very good competitive teams, plus it simulates a state tournament format, three games and three nights against solid competition. So the coaches get an idea of where their uh, team sits. Might not answer all the questions, but it'll certainly answer some of the questions, but I'm looking forward to getting started. Well, we always like, we always like to say it's three different games on three different days. It forces uh, teams to have to deal with... Uh, uh, being able to come back each day to make a play. Oh, absolutely. But uh, they're young kids with a lot of enthusiasm. I think they kind of like this as well. But, again, it gives them a chance to get in front of a lot of people. We're going to be very well represented tonight. Uh, always one of my favorite arenas to come to. Uh, but just a Gee, great weekend for hockey. <laughs> so so when, you, when, you, when you look at these teams that are playing in this tournament, you have the Elk River Elks, Eden Prairie Eagles to open uh, the play tonight against each other. And that will be Edina and Grand Rapids. We've talked so much about their tradition and history and, and how great that is. And then they, they mix it up again tomorrow. Then it will be Eden Prairie and Grand Rapids, Edina, Elk River. And then we close out with a Section 7 AA matchup between Elk River, Rapids, and then Edina and Eden Prairie, the crosstown rivalry. And you know, Edina has really been the one team coming out of the shoot that it's pretty much been them and the rest of the world. Well, and that's what I'm told. This will be my first blush as far as seeing a uh, a uh, very uh, well-represented Edina squad. They just, uh, they're a very quick team. They have a lot of checks in the right boxes. But, uh, again, coming into this format, uh, I'm sure some uh, questions will be answered for Coach Kirk Giles as well. The officials have taken to the ice here at Braemar Arena as the Elk River Elks are uh, preparing to step onto the ice from their locker room area. They'll be wearing their white sweaters with red and black trim as they'll take on the Eden Prairie Eagles, who will be wearing their tra customary tradition black road jerseys. They are the on visitors the road in this first row. They always say that. They like to point that out. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look at it, Pete, it's early. You neuter, you neuter the line changes. I mean, you can't. You get the last. You can't get the last change. You know, these coaches. They love to uh, work their little. Uh, Little matchups. Yeah, and, and Lee Smith is one of the better ones at that. But normally people are matching lines against Lee as opposed to Lee matching lines. I think they're going to run them and roll them and, and see how it goes. But it, it promises to be a nice night of hockey. But early in the season, I always kind of take a, a chance to reflect and look back at the at the players that, like Elk River, has lost. Uh, they lost Max, Max Michaelis, Connor Bazal, Bouton Horn, Jax Murray, and then on the back line, Benton Moss and Nick Perbitt. And then a goal, you have Benny Myers that graduated as well. So they have some holes to fill, but they're doing a pretty good job of doing that, Pete. They're averaging almost 50 shots on goal per game and averaging almost seven goals per game, and their defense is very sound as well. But they're going to get tested this weekend, and I think that's kind of the fun part to see is how they respond to that challenge. Once again, tonight's coverage presented by Axe, available at Target Stores. Follow us at My State of Hockey if you're not able to uh, check out all of the coverage of these games, although we know you do. Uh, we will be tweeting out the highlights as they roll for you. And also, don't forget about the state of hockey.com. Beauty status, bold character inspired by hockey lifestyle. Also presenting sponsors here for this weekend and the entire season of live streaming. And Laura Stam power skating. Uh, train like a pro, play like a pro. Laura Stam uh, does a great job with her work. We'll be seeing uh, a lot of their things. And there's the tradition companies, of course, who have been staples in the community. And they're sponsoring this tradition, Edina Holiday Classic. Let's throw it downstairs to Pat Milan, who is going to uh, take over your starting lineups. Andrew Dietrich gets the start and goal for the Eagles. 4.23 goals against, 0.862 goals against, uh, say, percentage. Keegan Langefels will be joined by uh, Andrew Irwin, a three-year veteran here at the varsity level. Good player. And they're going to rely on that tandem to provide some offense from the back line. Jack Jensen will get the nod in the middle. He'll be uh, joined as well up front by number 19, Ryan Lesko, and number five, John, or number nine, rather, John Middlestadt. Slick puck moving. Sophomore. Yeah, indeed he is. It must be in the bloodlines. 
Kyle Esprim will get the nod and goal for the Elk River Elks. Well, 2.25 goals against average, .886 save percentage. Took a bit of a, a kick in the shins against a very good Centennial squad looking to get back on the winning edge. Evan Junker will be one of your defensemen, and he'll be joined by uh, Tayo uh, Larson, or Tayo Larson, rather. Up front, it's going to be number 12, Jack Purvix, joined by Carson Simon. And we're missing one more. We'll check that number. Boy, he went fast there. I think they went uh, Carson Simon, you said. And you're right, he did go a little bit quick. Well, is he, is he, is he paid by the minute? Or? <laughs> Efficiency is we'll key. <laughs> We're about ready to get started as Bart Archer is exchanging pleasantries with the local fans. Just wanted to keep the personal conversations to a minimum, Bart Archer, as sorry. we get started. May, uh, love fest going on right now. <laughs> My word. I know. I'm sorry about that. How do you turn them away, you know? Not that I'm aware of, anyway. <laughs> this is the tradition Edina Holiday Classic right here on the stateofhockey.com presented by Axe, available at Target stores. So great to have you all on board here tonight. Bart, looking forward to this game? No, absolutely. In fact, I'm, I'm very curious to see uh, Lee Smith's addition. Lee Smith, he's a, he's a, a coach that may not have the resource that he had last year, but that doesn't mean anything. If you remember turning back the hands of time, he had the big five. Uh, they didn't have the success that everybody thought, but the next year everybody had to play. Everybody had to play from the top to the bottom, and they had great success. I look forward to that uh, from this uh, edition of this Eagle lineup. And one thing that Lee Smith can do as a coach, he can maximize the talent that he has, and he, he preaches the team concept. His players believe in him, and he believes in his players, and that goes a long way at the high school level. Feel confident, smell great from flow to toe with Axe, the number one male fragrance brand in the world available at Target stores. Here we go. We are underway. Could face off control by the Elk River Elks. It's going to be Larson with it. They'll play this across the line. Little touch pass picked off there. Middlestad slides over for the Eagles. That gets away from Langefels as he tries to play this up the wall. As he's checked on the play. Let's go there from the left wing. But there are the Elks to create all sorts of pressure. Bump the boards. Back in behind the net it goes. Out of the corner. Back up on the tape for Junker. Near side for Larson. Deflected, saved Dietrich. Oh, that one swatted away in the last second by Irwin. Nice job by the veteran defenseman. Blocker pad save over the top of the goal. That handcuffed Dietrich on its way in. Left wing side now out of the zone. It's going to be Jensen with speed across the line for the Eagles. He's going to play this one in. That's swatted at, played back into the corner. Big check there off the near board, or the far board, rather. Lasko stood up on the play. Now Larson is there as well. Lasko plays up for Middlestat as he's going to play to the point. Back in by Pager behind the net. Jensen now will try to cycle from the corner. Jack Jensen cycles low for Lasko. Oh, right under the stick of Middlestat, nearly Johnny on the spot. Pager from the right point holds. Nope, plays it to the near side. And that's going to be picked up in stride by Daler across the line. There's a shot. Blocker pad safe. Steered aside by Dietrich. Nice work there by the goaltender. Elks control. Off the side of the net, that's deflected away, and here they come, the Eagles, out of the zone with Garrett Smith. 
Elks will bump the boards, poked around, and now it's going to be handled out of the zone. And with it, it's going to be Tommy Lobbs across the line. They play to the slot area. That's poked away from Young. And here come the Elks to regroup in neutral, but back pressure put in there by Smith. Now it's going to be picked up by Pager for the Eagles, right back in behind his net. Pager now will protect the puck, plays it to the right wing side. That was on the stick of Tim Pikowski as he's forced in back behind the net. Right now the Elks are playing with a purpose in the offensive zone, suffocating on the forecheck. Playing that right back into the high slot are the Elks, picked off by the Eagles through center. Pikowski with it, up and out of play it goes. Well, pretty good pace so far early in this game. As you said, the Elks really kind of came to play, as you stated, uh, some pretty good offensive zone time, but de uh, the defense of Eden Prairie in the proper position really limited their good opportunities. Dietrich made one save. Rupp rolled up and over him, fortunately over the net for the Eagles fans, but uh, we're 0-0. Zero -zero. Uh, defensive zone faceoff for Elk wherever they win. Elks will fish this off the wall. That's Michaelis now back in behind. Hillen Brand plays that behind to his partner. That's Brockman to play ahead. Picked up by Irwin as he's smoked at the line but gets the pass off. Tough guy. Well, he made the play. Back in wide of Esperum in goal as it's going to be. Watch Jones, number 37 for the Eagles. Kid can skate. Back through center. He's on the back, back check, though. Pad save there. Maybe off the glove of Dietrich as they play it off the boards. Eagles look to break out of the zone. Can as it's the Elks to play this one back in. Eden Prairie now plays ahead. Played back in by Larson off Dietrich. Ooh, had nearly mishandled there, and he'll have to quickly cover up. Yeah, kind of an ollie moment, but it was Lucas Brockman on that right side point that stretched out and kept that puck alive and in play, allowing Elks to put some pressure on. Dietrich's faced a couple shots and so far has a pretty good feel for it, but that rebound kind of squirted out, so good support by Eden Prairie uh, for their goaltender, but good opportunity for Elk River. Faceoff win again. The Elks have been savaging in the faceoff circle. I believe they're three for three at this stage. Yes, the they game. are. Under 14 to go, 13.57 in period number one. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Edina Holiday Classic action right here on the stateofhockey.com. Middle stat, drop pass at the line. Snuffed out and played out of the zone by Bizal. Played down by Taylor, or Larson rather, and that was Jensen there, but a whistle on the play. Yeah, I think it's going to be closing hand on the puck. No penalty or anything, just face off outside the Elk River zone. But Eden Perry's got to kind of get involved in the face-off circle. They can't keep giving the puck in possession away to this Elk River team. They have too much speed. And Pete, you single somebody out saying he's got some wheels. I think he's not alone on this one. I think Carson Jones and a host of Elk River forwards have some good ups. They do. And, you know, don't forget about Jack Perbix when you take a look at the leaderboard coming into this content. By the way, follow us at My State of Hockey to see stats, highlights, and more all season long from our game of the week, including right here at the Tradition Edina Holiday Classic. But Jack Perbix tied with 14 points and good for third among the boy, boys' class double A's point leaders coming into this weekend. Yep, Copper power play goals, a shorty, and a game winner as well. So he's got all the checks in the right boxes, but he's one of the primary players on this team that Eden Perry's going to have to be aware of when he's on. Indeed he is. Puck's going to be played back up into the neutral zone by the Elks, and it's going to be the Eagles back to play with Langefels. Bumps back in behind the net. Finds his man in Irwin. Nice pass through center. Smith plays to the left wing and catches himself offside as he fed Jensen. Well, Langfels is one of those players that I think Coach uh, Lee Smith is going to lean on along with Andrew Irwin just to provide some backline support in the offensive zone. Obviously, Nicky Lieberman has moved on uh, 12 goals last year, so obviously a spearhead of the rush, but they're going to do it more a little bit by committee, but they're certainly capable. They just have to go ahead and execute. Irwin had himself a terrific elite league this year. Now it's going to be the Elks out of the zone with Perry. Across the line he goes. It's stopped by the Eagles, and they'll regroup in the neutral with Foss. Right wing on the tape. Elks will play this one in deep with Griffin Young. Back in behind the net. Langefels is there. Now it's Smith with it. Bumped on the play. Back in behind the net it goes. Conan was there. That gets through a pair of skates, and back up and out of the zone they go. Here come the Eagles, it's Pikowski. Esperum sees his first shot of the game, steers that to his left, and now it's gonna be the Elks bumping it to center ice. Quickly in off the glass and deep by Luke Busby. Picked up by the Elks Foss as he plays ahead through everyone, and icing will be your call. We'll bring it back into Elk River territory. Well, that uh, first dump in by Eden Prairie caromed off the referee right on the stick of an Elk River, so uh, a fortunate bounce for, for the Elks, but uh, again, a, a defensive zone faceoff now to Esperum's left. 
Uh, Eden Prairie, as we said, faceoff dot is very, very important. It's not just the win, but it's the possession after the win. And if they can get possession to sustain, they can put some pressure on Esperum. He hasn't seen a lot of action so far. Oh, they muscle that one toward <laughs> the goal mouth area there. That's going to be Will Height to play back in behind the net. Junker checked on the play, gets a little bit of help and support from Michaelis as they play it back in through. At center ice it goes. They find an opening and play that one back in deep. Check thrown there by Argett Singer. They try to force it to the slot area, nobody home. Back up to the line, quick snapper block. Nice job by Pikowski. He's gonna race to center, or check that. That was uh, the Eagles' Joey Grain, the speedy forward. Sent right back into Eagle territory. And you know, after a quick start, Things have settled down, but here's a little uh, opportunity off the faceoff there. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but we, we back up. It was Nick Nielsen that actually made a nice play in that neutral zone. It was Eden Perry coming with speed and numbers, but he just reached out and pushed that puck to his teammate. Worst case scenario, they get a faceoff in their zone. you got to kind of watch that. Too many faceoffs in your own zone can come back and haunt, but a uh, pretty good opportunity, as you said, Pete. Oh, off the draw. Muscle move. Let's go. Now it's turned back up ice by Simon across the line. He's going to throw it in as Perbix will... Watch Dietrich cover that up wisely and hang on to it. Well, one thing that both of these teams are, are pretty good at, at least early in this contest, but uh, he's using the deep or the blue line as a natural line of defense. The, it's a little muddy in that uh, in that neutral zone, but both teams are stepping up, but the forwards are coming back, allowing that to happen. Kind of muddy waters out there right now. Shots deflected up over the top of the goal and out of play. Will reset back into the Eden Prairie zone. Well, we appreciate everybody tuning in, as Pete said. State of hockey, a lot of stuff on that site. It's, it's a fun site. It's a destination site for me. I know that. Obviously, the uh, new merger with Let's Play Hockey has been a big deal for everybody as there's so much uh, quality content that's flowing around out there. And, of course, we have our high school hockey weekly. That's a great show, by the way. Presented by Axe, who is also part of Dream State this year. That's going to be great to watch. Off the glass at center ice. Played down by Larson. Sent right back in behind. Junker to the corner. Watched by Jensen, who backed into him with a check. Gets a little bit of help from John Middlestat. Junker and Middlestat. It's going to be the center iceman Perbix to outlet to the left wing side for Bazal. Connor Bazal. We've seen him patrolling out here for quite a bit. Indeed we have. At this tournament time. Sent right back in by the Elks. We have a scoreless tie here. Period number one, 1034 to go in it. Ooh, could that have been offside? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, it looked like it from here. <laughs> Off an elk player. It looked like he's inside the eagle zone. We're going to say icing on the play here. As giving chase for the eagles was Luke Busby, the sophomore. Well, there was a really nice play that originated down in the Elk River zone along the wall. It was Evan Junker uh, squaring off against two Eden Prairie Eagles. Nice stick work by him to free that puck up, get that puck out of the zone. Well, it's something that Elk River is going to have to do. They're going to have to be very efficient as far as their zone exits because uh, once uh, Eden Prairie smells blood, they, they're all over the net. So Fish a nice job it, yeah. by Junker. Shark in the water. Indeed. Back pedal played up to the right wing side. Handled by Smith from center. Nice touch pass there. Plays ahead for Conan in on goal. Loose puck. Esperum did not get all of it there as it's back behind that. Lobs plays this up to the right wing side. Nice little play by Smith to keep it alive as he's bumped on the play. The refs are oh, gets play. it through a pair of legs there, and that shot is wide of the mark by Pikowski. Chipped off the glass to the corner by Busby. Smith takes a hit, plays it out front for Pikowski. Garrett Smith does a nice job off the end boards here for the Eagles. We saw him do that at the Gemini Athletic Wear North-South Classic last week. The got an sent back into Eagle territory. Got an nice overtime play. winner, good for him. But uh, Edenbury Eagle, before they had speed and skill. Last year's model, speed and skill. This year's model, they have skill, but they have speed and size. So winning those battles along the wall is going to be key to Eden Prairie's success this year. And Smith just showed us a fine example of how that uh, can be effective. But you have to win those battles along the wall, and Eden Prairie is very, very strong at that. Face off to Esprim's right. 9.27 left in a scoreless first period. Pretty good pace, but as you said, they kind of settled into a rhythm now. Everybody's involved. Elks got that nice quick start for them out of the shoot. Eagles weathered the storm now, and they've had themselves a couple of chances off the end boards. Jones plays up for Argetsinger back in behind the net. Green is there. Back up for Argetsinger. Plays it rink wide. That's too far for Irwin, but check that. That was 
Schultz who played that one back into the corner. Big Karam. Argett Singer's going to pinch, but they'll spring a man out of the zone. Green is there. Nice play to come over to make the play with Schultz. Now it's the Elks across the line. And that's deflected back off the corner. Back on the stick and out of the zone. It's Green. Plays it to the right wing side. Will Height dangles, shoots, blocker pad save, rebound. Sits free off the goal mouth area, and it's going to be the Eagles back out of the zone with Schultz. Runs out of real estate, racked on the play there by Will Height. As the Eagles will take over off the glass, looking to play to center, but they can't. Ooh, that pass was dangerous down low with another opportunity there that failed to click. Green with it. Finds an opening. He's going to send this one down. Tried to hit the net, I think, but instead he misses the mark and icing the call. Yeah, but if worst case scenario, get those tired legs off, get some fresh legs out there. It's hard to defend with tired legs, so taking a, taking a face off in your own zone isn't the worst thing. It's not exactly ideal, but uh, just have to have a little bit more success in the dots. But this Edenbury team has brought their physical game tonight. A couple big, uh, big checks along the wall, a couple open icers as well. Uh, but Eden Prairie came to play as well. It's fun to watch. This is going to be a who's who in the hockey world here tonight, Brett Archer. <laughs> you know they're all well. here. <laughs> and they're filtering they? in. Fashionably late. Cross the line. Back into the corner goes. Lesko is there. Now it's Middlestat looking for Lesko out front. Middlestat again. Pushes it up with one hand. Shot on goal. Nice blocker pad save. Langefels. Now Middlestat there. Esperum now another blocker pad save. Oh, he scores! What a goal! Jensen bats it with his right hand out of the air, still in the air. Goes lacrosse into the back of the net. It's 1-0 yeah. Eagles. And for Jensen, that's his third goal. Been flying up and down the wings, getting rewarded for some hard work. But I think he batted it first with his stick. We'll have to take a look at it. It looked he like he batted his, his glove. Yep, it was his glove, and he got it into that area and then batted it again. But good shot on goal, found eyes. But there you see that athleticism, right? Batted his glove and then knocked it in. I don't You'll think see that, that right here, bang, right there, and then yep. whack. And it didn't, it didn't even get to the ice before he knocked it in. Very athletic play. Third goal of the season for Jensen. 7:50 left in this first period. Eden Prairie uh, draws first blood. Great work, Brett Johnson, up there on the production. Absolutely. Getting it down on the replays. Eagles lead one to nothing. 7:40 to go. Pikowski shoots that one, misses the mark. Esprim watches it wide to his left. Sam Pager plays it back in. Now it's going to be Conan gets away from one man. He's being worked on there by Perry. And they'll work it do the Elks to the line, but not out. Held in. That was off the stick of Pager. And it's going to be the Elks to regroup in their own zone. On the pockets, Foss plays it to the right wing. Griffin Young stood up on the play. Conan was there, tried to play it to safety, and here come the Eagles to center, big shivering hit. That one was thrown by Young. Back in behind the net. Busby watches his man as the Elks work the offensive zone. They trail 1-0 if you just joined us, as you can see on your screen there. Buzzed wide of the mark. Back up to the line. Quick shot, low one on the ice. Wide of the mark by Perry. Hill head to the ice, or head to the bench, rather. Those lobs that went to the bench, rather. Perry stays out. Now it's going to be backhand deep by... Conan as they change on the fly wholesale for the Eagles. Elks try to stretch and take advantage. They can't. That's going to be Argetsinger waited at the line. Nifty play. Shot pad save. Big rebound. Puck played back into the center ice area. It's going to be gathered in and played by Schultz. Clayton Schultz. Argetsinger now. Plays ahead. Will Height in stride across the line. Angles to his left. Pulls right handed shot over the top of the goal. Crane with it. Plays it back into the corner. That's going to be thwarted and Cut off there by the defense with Hill and Brand. Now it's Will Hyde again. Tried to play it off the weak side. Nobody there. Now it's Argett Singer. Shot that's partially deflected out of there by Esprim as Will Hyde was all over him. Off the boards by Foss to center. Across the checkered and deep by the Elks as they change. Dietrich will set up back in behind his net. Eagles will look to outlet for Will Height. That was up in the air about ankle high off the wall and into the other end it goes for a nice and call. Well, I do like the response from the Elk River Elks after getting scored on. It was a very athletic play that beat Esperum, but what they did is they came back with possession, actually got some zone time, but uh, very, very impressed with the way Eden Prairie is, is working the puck down low, but even equally impressed with the Elks uh, congesting between the dots. They really aren't giving him good looks at the, at the rink. It just took a very athletic play to get success. Rolling puck, ooh, nice job to be pulled out of there. Irwin was chasing, and the bigger play there by Langefeld, as they'll play this off the board. A little check thrown there. 
And it's going to be picked and played to the left wing side. Across the line, Lesko with it. Oh, look at that. Plays it up to himself. Nothing there. Shot on goal. Nice save made by Esperum. Middle stat, right wing side. Wide of the net. And it's going to be Jensen again as he's checked on the play. Plays it back down the wall. Lesko comes together with his man on the play. That was Larson. Larson and Lesko from the corner. Jensen. Now it's going to be shoveled ahead and out of the zone. On the tape, right wing side for Simon. Perbix now. Oh, look at that. Tried to get around his man. Couldn't get all the way around. They score! How did that find the back of the net? It does, and we're tied at one. Yeah, we may have to look at the, re uh, the replay, but I think that was Bazal that actually uh, finished that play out. That would be a seventh goal of the year, but but kind of an owly zone entrance by the Elk River Elves. Eden uh, Prairie, pretty good defense, but just lost, blew a tire on that one, and that was Irwin that went down, but I think that was Perbix that actually uh, finished that play off. But just a fortunate situation for the Elks right there. Just kind of didn't get that edge and found the open net. But it all started with speed through the neutral zone. Got it. The head man, the quickest way up the ice is head manning the puck. And he got it to the proper guy. And he finished that play from a bad angle. We've had two bad angle shots and two very athletic plays by the forwards. That's an example of having to honor Perbix and his ability with the puck and an open ice. And he does such a nice job. Absolutely. But they gave that blue line away a little bit. They're a little soft on the blue line on that one. But that could be just the circumstance. But he, Eden Perry's done such a good job of stepping up and defending. Once they put a chink in the armor, Eden, uh, Elk River made a count. Face off win by the Elks as they look to play that one toward the Goal mouth there he is. It's the Eagles that work their way out of the zone. To the near side it goes. Foss played down in the stride there by Young. Nice job to play that out of the air. He's watched Ooh. by Pager who jams him. Penalty coming up. Bart Archer called that from about 240 feet away. And that was reflex too. I, I apologize for that, but he got him pretty good. He's up, no words for the wear, but he, he, he's going to spend two minutes in the box. Great time for the Elk River uh, to kind of settle down a little bit, get possession. They're hovering around the 40% mark on the power play, so they're very effective. 8 of 20 uh, so far to date. 77.8 penalty kill for the Eagles. Obviously room for improvement. They, they're going to get their opportunity now. But that penalty is going to be a Sam Pager. Uh, on that Eden Prairie Eagles. Four minutes to go in the first period. We're not at a one. Elk River on the power play. Perbix will take the draw. Sent around the rail. As Jensen is there, two on one battle. Nice job to fight that one off from the corner. Boarding is the official call. It's a minor. Eagles find an opening. Nice job to play that one deep by Green. Jones oh, good hustle. tries to walk this one through. Runs into Esperim, albeit partially, I guess. Perbix races up the right wing side. Carries this to the corner. Low slot area. Jones will gather it in. On the back end. Nice play there. Gets it in deep. Green's going to create some pressure on Foss, who puts on the brakes to the corner and tries to guide it up the left wing side. He does. It's on the tape of Bazal, who angles that one ahead. Looking to cut back against the green was Perbix. And now it's going to be Jensen with it. Jensen finds an opening and sends that one back in the length of the ice. Conan is there. Good penalty kill so far for the Eagles. As so they'll play this one up off the boards. That's blocked. Puck is played to center on an Eagle stick. No hand pass there. Conan dances away. Blocker pads it. Better scoring chances here so far with 45 to go in the man advantage. Yeah, absolutely. They're winning the races at the puck. That was a really nice save by Esprim. On the penalty kill for the Eagles. Looking good. Back in behind the net it goes. Top of the right circle. Takes one. They score! Ellie takes one chance, Bart Archer. It's like Austin Humphrey with the original shot there that was stopped. And then the rebound was poked in. Yeah, and I think it was actually Austin Humphrey that may have finished that out. We'll wait for the official scoring, but all it takes is that one good opportunity, and Elk River made it count. Uh, it was it was Dietrich that made the initial save, but the, the rebound kind of kicked out a little bit. Really a good shot from the, from the right hash, but just uh, a very opportune time uh, for Elk River to put that one home on the power play. Now they have a 2-1 advantage. We'll wait for the official scoring, but I think it was Austin Humphrey, uh, the sophomore, and that would be his second goal of the season. 
Wearing the familiar family number 10, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. I, I ran into his uncle, and it was uh, kind of funny because he always thinks that his Edina number 10 should be hanging from the Raptors, but I think Walker might have something to say about Boy, that. Talk about a revisionist. <laughs> Jensen there from the corner. <laughs> Jack Ferry with the goal. They gave Brockman the other assist. And up through center ice it goes. That's poked away. The Eagles will look to forecheck here with Lesko as he's off the side of the mark. Checked on the play. Perbix comes away with it. Boy, he's logged some ice time here. Gets a nice return pass up ice from Young. There's a shot saved by Dietrich, he's going to hang on with 140 to go in the first, 2-1 in favor of Elk River. Well, not exactly the shot that he wanted to take, but uh, coming into the zone, he was challenged by Pager. Official scoring was actually Ferry on that one. I missed that only by a lot, but that was his first goal of the season for the sophomore, but what a big goal it was on the power play. Elk River, 2-1 lead. Eden Perry's going wants to finish strong, put some pressure on. They were very effective on that penalty kill, as you said, though, Pete. Right wing side it goes. Neutral zone controlled by the Elks. That's off a stick wide of Dietrich, who lets it go. Don't forget, coming up later tonight, it's the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks and Edina Hornets redirect. Deflection saved by Dietrich. Now the Eagles with it from the corner. Elks, good confidence off the forecheck here. When they get some pucks deep, they're tough to handle here. That one deflected wide. We have bodies going to the net, deflection screens, all sorts of trouble for Andrew Dietrich here tonight. He's got to deal with. Mikowski tried to will the puck off the stick of lobs, couldn't do it. And now it's going to be the Eagles with Garrett Smith out of the zone from the right wing side, left wing side rather. That's picked off and at center ice, gathered in by Bazal. Quickly dances from left to right, turns it off to the right wing side. They're going to send that one back in wide of the mark. Busby was there momentarily for the Eagles. Bazal now from the end boards. Delayed penalty coming up. This one on the Eagles. It'll be their second of the game. Already one for one on the power player, the Elks. Yeah, that's a tough penalty to take at this Here's juncture. Here's a look at it right here. Yeah, and it's Bukowski that's going to go on that one. Oh, he got, he got his money's worth on that one, but really not a penalty that... Uh, that the Eagles want to take. Just 31.2, as you can see, on the clock remaining in this first period. The benefit to it is Eden Prairie can put their primaries out, hopefully get through this period unscathed, but Elk River, what a golden opportunity to, to increase their lead to two in the waning moments of this first period. I think they're saying the hands are up toward the facial region, left the feet. That didn't help his cause. No, it really didn't. Just draws Lost attention. One-timer blocked. That's by Grain up high. Now it's going to be Argetsinger with it. They find an opening and send it back up to Jones one-on-one -on -one across the line. He looks to create, but who loses his stick and he, or his glove rather, and it's going to be back out of the zone with Perbix with five to go in the period. Perbix dangles across the line, turns and shoots wide of the mark. Eagles gather in, chip it up high and out of play. No, they don't. And the length of the ice instead as that ends the first period with a score. The Elk River Elks 2, the Eden Prairie Eagles 1. It's the tradition holiday classic from Edina, the state of hockey.com presented by X, available at Target stores. We're going to take a timeout, have a couple of messages for you, and come back and take a look at some of the highlight packages and the scoring summary of the first period. You're watching High School Hockey, the state of hockey.com.
Traditional Capital Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Whether you're a beginner or deep into the game, it's time to maximize your speed, your power, your agility. It's time to be the first to the puck and the first to the net. For over 40 years, we've trained the best in the game to skate better. You'll see the difference in just hours. No one breaks down the perfect stride like we do. New player or pro, you'll learn the same techniques as the Rangers, the Devils, the Swedish national team, and so many more of the world's top players. Are you ready to explode at the drop of the puck? Ready to break away from the pack? Then your time is now.
Be back to Braemar Arena, home of the Edina Holiday Classic. This is the tradition Edina Holiday Classic presented by Axe, all of our streaming action, and uh, of course the High School Hockey Weekly and Dream State presented by Axe. You can make a gift power, uh, gift giving power play, Bart. It's obviously the holiday season with Axe. It's the number one male fragrance, fragrance brand in the world and available at Target stores. Let's take a look at your highlight package. Indeed, and we have a couple good ones to show you. The first one in particular was a very athletic play by uh, the captain of the Seton Prairie squad, Jack Jensen. And it really uh, started with middle stat with possession of the puck behind the goal. Just got it back to Irwin. Nice, quick, efficient shot. A workable shot, good save by Asperum, but a very athletic play by Jack Jensen put that one in from a very bad angle, Topped similar to a kind that. of a kind of a cricket goal where he hit it right out of midair. Cricket, wow! But that gave Eden Prairie a one nothing lead, and that was at 9-10 of that first period. The mojo was there, but Elk River a nice answer. They came back and responded. After the power play, it was the Elks that finally had this rush, and look what results. Yeah, it was a quick, efficient breakout, but boy, and then you blow a tire. Langfell's committed a little early before they, they gained the zone, but again, the tire came out on that one. And, and it was uh, Dietrich that made the initial save, but it was just that puck had eyes, and it found that its way in. That was a move, though, from outside Oh, indeed, the end. absolutely. Tough one to defend against. He is an ankle breaker, I like to call that. <laughs> Very appropriate as well, but that nodded at a one. That goal was at the 12:26 uh, mark, and here's the final goal. That was Brockman that took that initial shot, and they're on the power play at the 14:30 mark. It was Ferry uh, that took uh, took advantage of that opportunity. Puck just got on a stick. Not a super big redirect, but uh, enough to be effective, and that's where we stand right now. Elk River 2, Eden Prairie 1. Coming out of the gate, I'm sure Eden Prairie wants to continue what they're doing. Even when they were man down, they were chipping the puck in, trying to get behind the defense, but they, but they were winning some uh, races to that loose puck. What Elk River does so well is protect in front of their goaltender. So Espera might have seen some shots, but they weren't from between the hash marks. They were actually from poor angles. Gave him a shot. It took a very athletic play for him to be beat that first period. I'm, I'm sure uh, Eden Prairie wants to get, uh, get more pressure on. Shots in that period, Elk River had 13. Not many times does Elk Eden Prairie give up 13 shots in the period. Eden Prairie uh, answers back with nine. Two to one, should be a, a great period. Long changes, get off the ice early, get the fresh legs out there and continue the flow. Get everybody involved. We'll face off from center ice between these two additions. The power play will continue for the Elks. A minute 29 on it, and we're underway here to start the second period. Game one of six here from the Edina Holiday Classic from Braemar Arena. As always, it's a great weekend of streaming. We'll be streaming a full schedule for you all season long. We've been well uh, underway so far this year. And we do have a boarding penalty uh, to Pekowski of Eden Prairie, so 110 left on the power play for Elk River who will break out of their zone with 16.35 to go in the period. That infraction came at the end of the first, and it's going to be controlled now. Bazal plays it up to the line. Now with it, it's played down low. That was Foss, who was looking for the return pass from Perbix. Instead, it's going to be Conan bothering him. Nice job by Foss to stay alive there. Bazal will take the check in front of the bench area, gives up along the line for Michaelis. He's back in behind, back up to the line again. Foss' shot was blocked, gets it back. One timer, that rolling puck for Perbix didn't go. Ooh. Oh, Bizal again tries to find an opening. Oh, Perbix, or check that, that was Foss with a nice play behind. Taylor, the defenseman, playing up high in front of the net area. Conan was there, Perbix again. Perbix with it. Puts on the brake, surveys, plays to the corner. They'll walk along the line. As a penalty, you can hear the stick on the ice slapping there from Esperum as Pikowski jumps back out. Langfels tries to play that one ahead. And they'll turn and play this one back into the corner. Swatted at, held in by Bazal. Shallow angle, wanted to go high blocker. Shut down there by Dietrich. At the line, but not out. Here's a chance to the right wing side. Shot, that's just wide. Missed the mark by inches. Left point, shot deflected, played back up ice. Here comes Lesko out of the zone. He has Jensen racing right up the middle. Lesko submarines a would-be hip check. Looks for a centering feed, nobody home. The Elks look to play ahead. In possession, across the line. Ooh, somehow it eludes everybody. A snapper that's high over the glass there from Griffin Young. And now it's going to be picked up at center by Humphrey. The big frame. Of course, his lineage here in Edina with his father, Mark. 
Uncle hey. Kyle. Uh, Uncle Kyle doing a little PR for him. Jensen looks for Lesko down low. Into the wall they go. Ooh. And here come the Elks out of the zone. On the tape across the line. Young shot turned aside by Dietrich. Down the boards it goes. That gets away from the stick of Pager. And it's Irwin who plays a long pass. Here's Grain with a breakaway. In on goal. Grain shoots. And that's a save by Esprim. Draws the penalty. Slashing the call. No penalty shot. And that's going to be on Brock Hillenbrand uh, for that slash. Almost a necessary penalty as he got in alone, but uh, I thought Esprim did a really nice job of making himself big just outside the blue. Didn't give him a lot to shoot at, but now even Prairie in turn gets a chance on the power play. 33.3% power play penalty kill for Elk River, 82.4, uh, so both very formidable. Uh, but Eden Prairie gets a golden opportunity. 14.09 left in the second period. As you can see, Elk River holding out a 2-1 lead, but Eden Prairie threatening on the power play. Down the line they go. Brock Hildenbrand goes for a slash. They find an opening. Back into the Eagle zone it goes. It's going to be Dietrich to set up behind the net for Langfels as he waits for the power play breakout to employ. Or, uh, Jensen, rather, with it across the line. He's going to go oh. east-west and caught Smith in offside. Well, it was a pretty good challenge at the blue line, actually. Uh, again, using it as a natural line of defense. He stepped up, forced him to cut outside. Smith just snuck in a little bit early. 136 left on the penalty to Hillenbrand. Not a lot going on right now for Eden Prairie. They misfired a little bit, uh, cleared the puck down, but they're looking to get some pressure on Esprim here pretty quick. By the way, if you come out to the Dinah Holiday class, be sure to find our State of Hockey street team who will be on hand selling these great hats that I like to wear, some of the other swag. It's very nice stuff. And you can also pick up some... Uh, uh, offer detail from uh, the Axe products right here at the Holiday Classic. You get a $5 gift card when you buy only four Axe products. That's going on right now. We're also going to have a couple of samples for you to check out as well. Nice. Jensen with it. Plays this one down low. And they'll play this one back in behind the net. Irwin tried to pinch and one minute's knocked off this power play for the Eagles. It's, it's going to be Langfels to regroup back in his own zone. Here he goes with it, the junior defenseman. Looked up to the left wing side. Jensen will regroup and wind it back up. Oh, gets away from one man. Another carries this one low. Jensen, can you imagine if he was on the Edina roster still? <laughs> what that team would be like? Oh, absolutely, but he's, he's doing good Grant things for the... take Grant Silianoff, <laughs> who's with Shattuck? Absolutely. I mean... A wealth of riches, but I think he looks pretty good in that, uh, that red, black, and white. Here comes Pager across center ice. Plays to the left wing side. Middlestad with it. Carries back into the corner. Oh, Ooh, he's jammed on the play. Nice check there. He's up. They try to go after him there. Will Height did. And the length of the ice, they go with it. Pager's pressured on the play by Bizal. Pager's going to try and help it off to the right wing side. Pikowski, ooh, dangerous in front of the net there with Perbic staring on. Left wing side for Lesko as we're five on five. Shot and a save by Esperum. 2 1 your score here. As we get now to the five minute mark of period number two. Elks outlet left wing side in stride. Ooh, here they go. Bizal straight line up the left wing rail as it's Pikowski watching him. Now Perbix takes over from the corner, walks out front. Dietrich covers, lost his sight on the puck for a minute. <laughs> well, that was Jack Perbix along the end wall, just kind of cut, cut it tight, try to tuck it in on the short side. Uh, but nice job again by Dietrich to close off that angle. Here you can see, just uh, saw the opportunity. Nobody in front, nobody to dish a puck to, so he took it upon himself. Really a good heady play. You never know what can happen, but you force the goaltender to make a, make a play. Face-off win by the Elks. Played back in behind. Mass was there. Bumped to the boards. Grain will play ahead for Jones. The Eagles are cut off. Nifty play there and sent right back in by the Elks. That was Matt Mitch Mass again making the play. And they'll chisel that one back into the Eagle zone. Busby bumped off the boards there by Mass turning his junker. Shot was blocked. Bounding to the neutral zone controlled by the Elks. They got to be on the short list for the Section 7 AA. Obviously you've got Cloquet Esco Carlton in there and the front runners Duluth East. Ooh, Busby 
Goes through the wickets right there in front as Simon was on him. Yeah, Cloquet scoring some goals in bunches as well. Oh, they got the Langenbrunner kid. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, I saw that. Of course, Hate to saw that name on the back of a uniform. That's been done many times at the next levels, but you know, that team, that Cloquet Esco Carlton team, very good at the Pee Wee AA level, Bantam AA. Uh, they've been solid, so watch out for them. But really it comes down to Duluth East, I think, and whoever else wants to take them on, at least at this stage. Yeah, Duluth East, uh, they return a lot of players, and, and it's just a very strong squad, and coached by Mike Randolph, that's pretty good. One thing I noticed about Elk Rivers, they're only sending one man in the park. The, the, the second two are reading the play, but they're, that one man is taking good angles and forcing him into areas of coverage and really stopping Eden Prairie before they can really get anything going through the neutral zone. Nice Playing job a, by Elk Rivers. responsible River. game. Yes, indeed they are. Sometimes you can tend to be a little overzealous. You get on the puck a little bit too quick. You create a lot of space, but they're really taking the space away and congesting that uh, neutral zone, and that's been a, a pretty good recipe for success so far tonight. Indeed it is. 10.33 to go on the second period. 2-1 to one in favor of Elk River. We face off at center. Ripped right back into the eagle zone. Pinching down the wall. Simon was there. Now Lesko takes over. Looks ahead for Jensen. He's pickpocketed at the line as the Elks play it back down in their own zone. Perbix bumps the boards back in behind. It was Larson there. A pool cue this one up to the right wing side and the Elks look to break out. Nice play there. Fizal snapper. Nice blocker pad saved by Dietrich. Perbix chops at that one. Irwin kicks ahead. Perbix gets it back. Goes through his legs. Stays back on it. Now Irwin's going to take over back in behind his net. Plays back over for Middlestat. Chopped at there by Jensen. Gets it back now as he looks back up ice. Goes against the grain. Finds Middlestat. He's going to have to hurry as he was hounded on the play by Lobs. It's Lobs with it. One of the captains of this edition. Young is there. Left wing side. Lesko pokes it to safety and back up ice he goes. He has Middlestat to the right. Jensen trailing. Oh, nice power move. What a save by Esperman as he got extended on that one. Yeah, I think it rolled on him a little bit, but he's been uh, doing a great job of flying up that wing. Uh, Lesko, a uh, right-handed shot up the left wing, having pretty good angles, but he's using the edges and putting pressure on Elk River. He had options to his right and in the middle. Both players, one going to the net, one trailing up high. Ring for Smith, couldn't get there, deflected. Busby is there as he bumps off the boards. Foot race for this loose puck, chopped at there by Mass. And now Conan's gonna take over as Busby watches him. Right wing side it goes. Turning it back up ice, it's Pikowski. You see that 12, you think of Nolan Sullivan. <laughs> yes, indeed. But it seemed like he was on that roster for 30 years. Yeah, indeed. You gotta kind of deprogram yourself a I little bit. Sometimes. I'll get it by state Cross tournament. Cross the line. <laughs> Conan with it. That hits a pair of skates. Look out. Big turnover. Saved by Dietrich. That's a big save. They come back together with that turned aside by Conan, but not out of the zone. Neutral zone it goes. It's going to be handled by Larson. And they'll gather it back in and handle. Nice job up the right wing side for Michaelis as he's watched by Pager. Stays on the puck. Cycles back in behind that top of the slot. Look out, you can feel it coming here, Bart. They're getting some good looks and angles toward the goal mouth area are the Elks. It's a result of a lot of hard work. Back in across the line it goes. Eagles and Elks up high. Controlled across the line by Junker as he tries to work his way down toward the goal mouth area. Chipped right back in behind the net. Bazal is there. Now it's Simon. Check down the play. Perbix Jones goes after him. A little help by Bazal. Nice job. Shot and a nice save. Turned aside by Dietrich. Jones. Now Pikowski takes it. He'll walk this one up through neutral. Tries to stick handle around traffic. Pikowski green shot. Scores! Pikowski shakes off a check, and that was. Joey Green going to the net, buries it to tie it at two. And Joey Green, that's his first goal of the year, but what a big goal it was. A lot of hard work. Elk River was taking all time and space away from Eden Prairie. They finally got a little opening to move the puck and make some plays. And you'll see the nice zone entry, a little soft to the blue line, just took the, took the puck, got it to the open man, and he made that count. Nice redirect by 
by Green, but what a big goal it was for Eden Prairie. Now it's going to be interesting to see how Elk River is going to respond, but now we're not at a two. It's a whole new ball game, but uh, Elk R- Eden Prairie's not getting a lot of opportunities, but when they got one, they made it count. Well, right before that, we saw the Elks with plenty of opportunities and a couple of big saves by Dietrich to keep it a one goal game. Now we're tied at two. Absolutely. Not a lot of space for Eden Prairie to move in their own zone. Uh, Elk River doing a great job of barring the door and keeping the puck, uh, keeping the puck alive. Behind the net, bothered now by Middlestat to last goal. They had Jensen in the slot area, but they couldn't get it there. Middlestat works the cycle, but couldn't get it done as it's going to be controlled now out of the zone by Young for the Elks. He works it to the left wing side. Oh, through the legs, shot into the midsection. Humphrey with a little dangle at the line, a little slash after the fact that fired up Schultz. <laughs> well, that was actually a really good move at the, at the blue line to create some space for himself. Got a good look at Dietrich, but Dietrich outside the blue. He's made a couple big saves in this period. Otherwise, we might be talking about an Elk River advantage right now. He's held his team in to the point where the, the, once they get their, their medal about them or their, their wheels about them, they can be effective. But so far, a couple big saves by the goaltender. Elks, another face-off win. Wide of the mark there by Nelson. Back up to the left point. That's deflected. Nice pass. Better shot. Nice save. Oh, what a play there. Yeah, that was a very heady play, but I think it was Brockman that actually uh, drew the defender in and just chipped it off. And it was a good uh, good shot on goal by the Elk River Elks, and I think that was Mass. Moss, Mass that actually took that shot. Kind of a shallow angle, but Dietrich kind of covered that up. Look at that. Nice, yeah, little, nice, little, nice little play. And then the follow-up as Ooh. well. Dietrich took that uh, space away. The pinball flipper there from Dietrich. Did you see that? <laughs> pinball flipper. I like Smith. it. Jammed on the play by Mass, who's having a great period here, if you've just joined us. Down the boards it goes, picked off Conan, he can score, pushes that one wide. Now it's going to be Smith looking to play that one. Smith had the big game winner in overtime last week as they defeated the Hermantown Hawks to the Eagles. What a game that was. Backpedaling in was Irwin, shot on goal taken there by Brockman to the point. Handled now by Nelson, that one's wide of the mark. Now it's Simon. Eagles look to work that one up the ice with Kresbach. And now it's going to be Langfells with it. Langfells plays left wing for Smith. Conan takes over. Chips that one back in behind the net. And the Elks will take over from the corner. Ooh, Jensen tried to work it through some wickets there, but they got a hand pass. And I think they're going to bring it all the way down into the Eden Curry zone, the appropriate call. As you can see, just 520 left in what's been a very entertaining second period. I think if we're going to give a territorial advantage, it really has to go to the Elk River Elks. And again, their 1 2 2 four check scheme, uh, and they deviate from that a little bit, but they're putting good pressure on the Eden Prairie defenders and really taking away their space. But Eden Prairie's done a pretty good job of finding the openings and getting the puck up the ice. Uh, they just like a little bit more flow to their game right now, but Elk River's uh, contesting each and every possession. Rink wide to the corner. Lesko takes over. Lesko comes away with it as he looks to play this one to the back end. Gets it poked off his stick. Here come the Elks back out of the zone. Argett Singer clears but not out of the zone. High shot from the point or shot taken from high rather by Simon that misses the mark. Poked off the boards by Bizal. Picked up by Middlestat. He has help along the way with Lesko. Nice play by Larson to shut his man out. And it's back up ice, it goes. Swung back in on goal. It's going to be played off by Esperum behind the net. Pressure comes in from Wilhite. And here come the Elks across the line. Slowing it down a little bit like the Temple play. Waiting for some help. Went to try to go across ice there. That fails to click as Wilhite goes through center. Picked off and sent right back in by Young. Long carom for Green. The game's most recent goal scorer as he knots it at two. Now it's picked off at the line. Look out, here's Will Height. Tries to go inside out. Lost the handle there. You know, it's easy to save from up here. That's one young kid. Just pumped that one through the legs. He got a natural screen. Irwin has the heavy shot. That snuck through. Esperin was there. Back up in the mid area there of Irwin, who runs into Humphrey, and they're going to call that a hand pass. Well, Peter, you brought up about Will Height, and what Sam Will Height is, he's big and strong, but he has a knack of scoring. He's not uh, uncomfortable in the scoring area. And you get the Lescos, you get the Will Heights, you get those big bodies that can actually move and put pressure on those Elk River defenders. So far, they've responded quite well. Face off in the Eden Prairie zone to Dietrich's right. Jones for the Eagles. 
That's going to be lobs for the Elks. Argett Singer gets it off the Jones faceoff win. Look out. See it. Well, the coaches there, Justin Mysick duck, ducking for cover. Still got the moves, but that was initiated by Eden Perry. So again, face off to Dietrich's right. Back up to the line, shot through traffic, saved Dietrich. Again, poked away. Argett Singer's being hounded there. Watched closely on the play by Lobs. And now it's going to be Jones out of the ice. Nice exit. Right wing side it goes. Eagles carry it deep. Will Height maintains possession as he has sticks all over him. Nice work there. Now it's going to be handled by Green. They decided to put the body on him this time. Yeah, the sticks can only take you so far, <laughs> That's right? That's right. Again, it's another battle as they pin up off the far boards. Eagles look to fish it free, and they do. Looking up the line, nothing doing there. And now Will Height tries to walk away. Bizal is there. Ooh, big check by Jones. Shot that's wide of the mark away from Esperum. Will Height shots blocked. Good shift for this line for the Eagles. Will Height oh. again. Blocked again. Back into the Eagles zone it goes. Dietrich will steer off to the right for Argetsinger. He'll ring the boards. Pager with it. Ahead to Conan. Conan with it. Up the left wing side, puts on the brakes. Ooh, that hit some iron bar? I think it did. I heard a noise, but I uh, couldn't see it. Partially grazing the crossbar. Conan looks for Smith to the corner, but it's picked up by the Elks as they're going to ring the right wing boards. Shot it on goal. Esprim goes down to the butterfly, looks it right into the catch glove. Face off to his right. Well, as you said, the very effective uh, shift by Eden Prairie, kind of you know, playing the Katie bar the door, kind of turning Elk Rivers. Uh, tides on them a little bit, not giving the defense a lot of room to move. They had some great success, and those are guys like Rain and, and Lesko and Wilhite, uh, the bigger bodies that are actually uh, putting the defense of this Elk River on notice, and they've actually uh, carried the play in the last couple minutes. 2.13 left in the second period. We're tied. Been a good one. Shoveled up in the center ice area and up and out of play. Hey, guys, by the way, Axe gives you the confidence to need to smell great on and off the ice, Bart. I know we all know that's a priority. Do your mom and those in your life a favor to help beat the stink and also save a locker room. Right, Bart? I mean, you know that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're you, laughing because you, you know it's true. You made me smile. Oh, man. Well, I'll do everybody a favor. I'll might, take it as constructive you, criticism. You, know you might be able to get a date if you fire some of that. I, I don't I'm think just it's saying. I know it's good stuff. I don't know if it's that effective. Maybe, I need more help maybe, than that. Maybe you should try it. Well. Cross the line, middle stat. Up off the glass to the line. Held in and played down the rail. It'll ring the boards. Middle stat with 140 to go. Fast moving second period. It's been a flowed game. You know, definitely. This is a different looking Elk River team from what we've seen in the past. Perbix, they find a man in front. Oh, and that one trickles off the side of the net. They can't pull the trigger. Oh, and Bizal has a chance. Took a terrific feed from Michaelis behind the end boards. Couldn't finish. Well, Perbix certainly drew some attention once he got to that uh, shallow in the in the right dot and even drew Dietrich out, but he just couldn't corral the puck back. And then all of a sudden it gets to uh, Bizal, and Bizal makes a, a pretty good shot. But Dietrich once again makes a very good save in tight. There haven't been many great in tight opportunities, but when there have been, Dietrich's really answered the bell. You can see it right here. Nice challenge at the blue line, but they maintain control. But you can just see it started to roll on a little bit. That puck had ice. Found its way through all the wickets. Uh, but kind of a testy moment for Eden Prairie. They, you know, both coaches with a minute or two left in the period or to start the period. We've talked about this before, B. Wagner. Very important for both teams. Both teams want to finish very, very strong. If you can gather up uh, a little bit of energy going in, that certainly can uh, bode well and have some residual value moving into the third period. Very important face-offs from this point forward. You always want to finish strong. Argett Singer plays it to the right wing side. There's Will Height in front of the snow in front of the bench area. He keeps it alive. Plays that one into the corner. Grain is there as he stood up on the play. Lobs was there. And now it's going to be the Elks looking to play to center. Oh, turned over at the line and just offside. No goal there. Well, it was young. Well, they're still taking a little bit of exception, but to the Elk River forwards defense, uh, it was a continuation of that play. He was in, in basically uh, doing the shot. You can see he tried to hold back a little bit, but again, they're going to have a discussion, and uh, we're going to go ahead. Oh, it looks like they're going to 
be. They're taking two. They're going to take them both. That's the appropriate call. If you're going to call something, call them both. Uh, but again, we should still be five on five. Just just under a minute to go in this first period. But again, that shows a little emotion. You know, I, emotion as long as you can kind of keep it uh, in control. Emotion's uh, certainly a, a driving force to the energy uh, that we know for ho for hockey. Uh, but take them both off. They'll feel shame for a couple minutes, and then they'll uh, they'll set them free. Tonight's coverage presented in part by Beauty Status, bold character inspired by the hockey lifestyle. Laura Stan Power Skating, train like the pros, play like one. And also, don't forget about your title sponsor to this tournament itself, Tradition Companies. Massive amounts of companies they've got there making an impact. And of course, Axe. And on goal, available at Target stores. Boy, that was a good save uh, by Esperin, but the rebound kind of danced out there for an opportunity. Want to clean those up a little. So it remains five on five with the coincidentals. It'll be Irwin up the ice, tries to cut to the middle as the Elks will take over, and we got a penalty for a hook. Well, a stick penalty in the waning moments of a period, not really what you want to see if you are a coach. But, Pete, the thing about the the coincidental penalties, it's not just two minutes, it's two minutes and then the next whistle, so it could even uh, uh, go farther than that, but it's going to be Connor Bazal for hooking final moments of this period, putting Eden Prairie on the power play. Got and it in there, see that he stopped moving his feet and went for the ride. Yeah, you got to keep your feet moving, but you can't check with your stick. Great opportunity for Eden Prairie on the power play. Jensen with the faceoff win. Now from the right side, Jensen again down the wall. Elks look to clear, but they can't get it out. In on goal from Irwin. They like to work the puck back up to Andrew Irwin, who has an absolute missile. Yeah. And one of the things that I think if you're the Eagles that they could talk about wanting to do more of well, is get traffic to the net. Absolutely. Could create some space, but as you said, he does have a cannon, but he made the appropriate play by taking a wrist shot. Didn't have time to take the big windup and, and set it up, so a nice play by Irwin. Easy save by the goaltender, though. Jensen tried to pull it to the backhand. Ten to go in the period. Poke back up to the neutral zone. Down goes oh. Perfix and into the box goes an Eagle player. <laughs> yeah, indeed, and he, he sold that pretty well. Just enough to <laughs> draw too much attention, but there you got the referee's, uh, certainly the referee's attention. I think it's Langfeld that's going to go in the box. Not 100% sure, or it could be Conan. It looks like it's Conan going to the box for that one. Trying to plead his case. You don't win uh, too many of those. But you can see he did get the, the stick in. Again, a stick penalty. You just want to stay away from that. Sometimes it's hard to do. But now it's going to be four on four. A lot of, a lot of space out there right now. Just 3.8 seconds. So obviously uh, this face is very important for both teams. Uh, but going into the next period, there's going to be a lot of space to move. Perfix tried to pull that one back. Couldn't Jones, nice job to get the job done. That'll do it for the second period. Deuces are wild as we're tied at two. So it'll be a four on four for another minute 28 to open up the period. And then it'll be an abbreviated Elk River power play. And then we'll get back to the five on five and look to solve something here between these two teams. You know what, off to a great start. Always great games here at the Donna Holiday Classic. Great vibe if you're a high school hockey player and you want to be scouted. Uh, this is probably a pretty good place to be. I mean, I, I'm i looking around, I see at least minimum nine to 10 NHL teams represented up here right now. Not yeah. even talking about the colleges, right. so. There's a lot of notepads out there, a lot of notes here, here. being hey, taken. Let's say hello to our friend there, hello. hello. <laughs> How you doing, good get, to see you. Nice and comfortable. We're gonna give you a break. We're gonna take a time out. When we come back, we'll have more coming up for you. High School Hockey right here on the stateofhockey.com, presented by Axe, available at Target stores. We are between periods of the Dinah Holiday Classic. Of course, one of the great tournaments in high school hockey. It means we've started things, and uh, everybody can take notice with these four great teams that are participating. And joining us now is Carol Griffith, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Robert Thomas Holmes. Carol, thanks for joining us between periods here today. So let's start from the very beginning. You know, we've all heard of Robert Thomas Holmes, but really, who is Robert Thomas Holmes? Well, our viewers can obviously see the, the incredible drone footage of your Lakeville properties that uh, Robert uh, Thomas Holmes have put together. 
Uh, that is an absolute gorgeous. That's got to be a crown jewel of some of the things you've done. So, so let's talk about your target market then. Uh, who, who do you find as your typical target market for your homes? So you, the the building industry had a big awards gala last month, and, and you came home with quite a few trophies. It was a successful run. Can you talk on that a little bit? Wow. And then finally, what advice would you give to people who are looking to build a home right now? Sure. So, so, sounds fan. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, keep going. Can I ask you a quick question on the uh, sustainable uh, uh, comment you made? How do you know what is sustainable or not as far as something that would last? What do you look for in that?
so that's uh, really incredible advice from Carol Griffith, who's a vice president of sales and marketing for Robert Thomas Holmes, part of Tradition Companies. Uh, really wonderful uh, outreach that your whole company has done for this tournament and youth sports across the metro area. Thank you for uh, telling us a little bit more about Robert Thomas Holmes, and hopefully uh, people will start uh, picking up the phone and calling. You can also be visited at robertthomasholmes.com. Anything else you want to add for contact information, Carol? Sounds good. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk soon. We'll be back with more right after this. This is the Edina Holiday Classic at thestateofhockey.com.
We got uh, two scoring chances. We welcome you back to Braemar Arena, home of the tradition Edina Holiday Classic. Eden Prairie and Elk River knotted up at two. Let's take a look at your highlights from period number two. A couple of scoring chances each side. First, we'll take a look at Elk River going to work here. Yeah, a nice, uh, nice zone exit. They just worked the puck to the open man. Uh, but again, Dietrich comes out. You can see where his, his positioning is on that one. He's outside the crease, really taking the shots away. But if you look at, at the way Elk River gets out of their zone, they get the man, the puck to the open man right here. They get challenged a little bit. Kind of pulls the puck in. Off the zone, yep. And I don't know if he, he just lost his edge or what, but uh, trickled through the crease. But, again, pretty good support by the Eden Prairie defenders knowing their goaltender is vulnerable at that one. We're going to get a look at it again. Dietrich just, got a little out of position here, too. Yeah, he did. And that's where Irwin came in and really uh, kind of closed the door at least uh, – Put a body in front of that puck to keep that puck out of the net. Nice job to recover, too, by the goaltender. Absolutely. Now the Eagles back the other way had a couple of chances of their own as the teams are stepping back on the ice. But here you have a two-on-one, almost a three-on-two. And that was a great chance across the way. Don't know if that got a net. We looked at it super slow-mo. Couldn't quite tell. But nonetheless, glorious opportunity for the Eagles. Yeah, and that was Ryan Lesko, the senior forward, a right-handed shot on the left side, and that can have a, a really nice effect is how you can attack the goal or how you can take the shot on goal, but it changes the angle a little bit. But uh, Lesko is a driving force for the Eden Prairie Eagles during that second period, and I don't look for anything to change. But, Pete, we did talk and now about... now look at the stretch pass to absolutely. Joey Green. What does he do here? Draws a penalty. Well, and the thing about it was is, is Esperm actually took away. He, he played that actually quite well, but as you can see, uh, like you said, Pete, they took a penalty uh, on that one to uh, to put Eden Prairie on the advantage. We'll see, we'll see. It was a nice uh, nice stretch pass out of the zone. That might have some residual value to stretch the defenseman or at least make him aware that there might be somebody behind him, but it, it kind of has a way to keep you honest if you can make it, uh, make it be effective. And then the Eagles tied the game at two on this goal. Yeah, in... Uh, I think it's Pikowski that gained the zone. You can see that he drew the defender over. Uh, kind of gave him a shiver, but then got it out to uh, to Grain, and Grain just one-timed it in. That one had eyes on it. Watch but him uh, uh, greet that contact there and just stay on the puck. That's absolutely. great. Absolutely. And then Grain finding the seam part. Good play there. Well, and that's where the, the size of the seed and pretty. I mean, look at the speed on Pikowski. He's a, he's a big boy, but he can move uh, move the puck up the ice and just uh, drew the defender in, still had possession, got it to Green, and Green uh, made no mistake about it. But that's where we are right now, 2-2. Two to two, And we have 4-on-4 four four for a minute and 28 seconds. Uh, but uh, there's going to be a lot of space out there. Both teams have really good speed, uh, so there's going to be a pretty exciting uh, period, but a very exciting minute and 28 seconds, that's for sure. Bart, I know you've got the mullet or the dual exhaust. Free flow or close uh, crop, whatever your style, or whatever your style of salad is that you prefer. I don't have much to work with. I know you like the <laughs> chef, but I know you like to go with the, you kind of go with sort of that Craig T. Nelson thing from well, Coach. It's not a chef salad, it's more like a Caesar salad. <laughs> <laughs> Axe does have a product to keep your flow looking fine. For styling products, the best thing about your style is that it's yours. Axe styling products keep your unique look looking on point bart archer and i know you you've got a good side and a bad side oh. you always like to focus on the good side and uh, it's all part of the flow uh, indeed i'm half full i'm a half full guy half full of what i'll let you be i said flow oh okay your uh, flow now my 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 flow is nothing to be uh, notable that's where where uh my beauty status hat comes into play we got that last year <laughs> yeah you this time. play that quite a bit no oh, I, fl I, fl I fly this flag all the time man Elks 3-1 and one entering this game. Eagles 2-1 and one entering this. There's some discussions along the way. Coming up at 8.30, it's going to be Edina and Grand Rapids as we enter uh, what should be an entertaining third period of play. We're even up at 2, and we're underway here. 4-on-4 four four for another 125. Will Height was there for the Eagles. Larson to break that up and send it back up into the neutral zone. Junker was there, played back in. Langfels plays rink wide for Irwin in stride. Looks up for Will Height to the right wing. Larson watches him. That's deflected away from a stick into center ice. Langfels clears that one right back in. And it's going to be gathered up by Larson. Larson on it. Now Will Height was there. And out of the zone comes Perbix. Poked off his stick. And he's jammed into the wall by Irwin, but stays on it to the corner. Langfels leaves up for Irwin out of the corner. 47 to go in the four on four here. Early stages of period three. Played in front of the Eagles bench. Eagles ranked number nine in this week's Let's Play Hockey rankings that were released on Tuesday. 
Back behind the net it goes. Langfels looks to cycle that one up the wall. Can't picked off by the Elks, four on four. Larson plays back over for Perbix on the tape. There's a shot that's blocked. That bid by Simon doesn't get through. Played back in behind the net. Pursuing on the play is Lobbs. That was Irwin to outlet. Eagles now across the line with a shot on goal by Will Height that's turned aside by Asperum. Jones works the wrecking crew in the offensive zone. Bumped on the play and out of the zone they come with Lobbs. Five on four power play now for the Elks for 24 seconds. Back into the corner it goes. Fished out of there, nice work by Langfels. Grain comes over, he turns and plays that off the boards. They love to have the speedsters up front and Grain and Jones usually. Boy, they can get up and down the ice awful quick. Now it's Smith who jumps out, seven to go. Across the line on it, now it's Bazal. And they'll turn this one up. Pikowski, nice play. Lays ahead for Smith across the line. Smith, oh, a pass on the stick there for Pikowski. Didn't see it coming. That was nifty. Boy, didn't miss by much either. Now it's Perbix with it. Perbix stood up, top of the slot. Shot that's blocked. Traffic everywhere. And it's off the boards and sent the length of the ice by Smith, icing the call. Well, really a good look by, by the Elk River Elks uh, deep in the Eden Prairie zone. Diedrich a little vulnerable on that one. But you can see the wide open net. A nice job of actually closing that uh, that space and good support by the defenders as well. But the, it just seems like Dietrich is out challenging. But you have to kind of take pause not to get out too far to where you make yourself vulnerable. But so far he's done a great job of keeping that puck out of the net with some good opportunities by the Elks. They have a lot of traffic deflections and screens his way. Right wing on the tape across the line. Middle step. Ooh. Went up high, kind of snuck in on Esperum there, got enough of the elbow on it to deflect it up and out of play. Well, what I wanted to do is stay away from comparing John to Casey because that's obviously an unfair comparison, but if there is a comparison with those quick hands, I saw traces of uh, uh, the middle stat has the quick hands in the bloodlines, but he got that shot off a little quicker than I think Esperum was ready for it, but he ramped it up and out of play, face off to his left. Nice opportunity by middle stat. Very impressed with John Middlestad's game so far as a sophomore. Very mature for a sophomore. In on goal, Esperin the save. Lesko was there. Well, Argent Singer with a nice wrist shot from the point. Uh, that had to make its way through traffic as well, but Esperin did a nice job of tracking that puck. You can see some traffic in front of him, but more importantly, he held on to that. Behind the Eden, or the Eden, or the Elk River, not cheese. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll I'm starting to rub off on no you, Pete. I'm sorry. no there, Bart Archer. This is concerning. <laughs> Now it's gonna be Argett Singer with it. Plays it rink wide, Eagles retreat in their own zone. Elks shutting down the neutral zone here oh. in the third, but not now, here comes Lesko. Oh, kind of dangled a little bit there. Larson pokes it off his stick. There's a fluttering puck wide of the mark, taken from the line by Schultz, who will come over and handle with Argett Singer to his left. He better, nice job to get away from yeah, traffic. Nice escape. Now it's gonna be Jensen with it, he's gonna Wind up, loves to do this. Kind of Mike Madano style. Runs right into an Elk player. Left wing side, here comes Humphrey. Hard shot and on goal, handled and covered up by the goaltender, Andrew Dietrich. Yeah, that was Humphrey showing pretty good speed. Top of the left dot, took that shot. Dietrich made the initial save, but that puck started to squirt on him a little bit. But when Jensen was starting to ramp up and getting out of his zone, I think he took a, uh, a bit of a slash across the hands, lost his glove, and he kind of looked a little gingerly on that one. So we'll keep an eye to see if it has any ill effects on him. Big carom up to the line, played back in high slot area. Nice outlet there by the Eagles, Pikowski. Looks for Smith, somehow it works its way up and out of play. Yeah, I think that was a really good challenge at the blue line by the Elk River defender. Smith was coming in with some speed and uh, just tried to backhand it off the boards and play to a particular space, but uh, uh, again, the cutaways up into the Elk River bench face off just outside the Elk River zone. Learned a lot about the Eagles and their 5-2 win against Brainerd last weekend from the Eden Prairie Community Center, the North-South Classic, and it's, you know, Brainerd's a very physical team. They don't give you much space to work. And the Eagles had an opportunity to fight or flight, and they definitely fought and, and, and showed a level of grit and toughness. I was talking to Coach Lee Smith with before the game, and he was very pleased with that component that his team brought. Well, and they were down 2-1, to one, and I think uh, it was four different scores. Middlestead had two goals, but I think four different scores represented the score sheet. That's not a bad thing for the Eden Prairie Eagles. Not a bad thing at all. Laid up through the middle too far, icing the call. Back into the Eagles zone we go. 
Well, Pete, if you look at the, the body of work, Eden Prairie, obviously it's early in the season, up 3-1 to one against Creighton Durham Hall. Uh, you know, had a 3-1 to one lead. Creighton Durham Hall scored uh, five unanswered goals, had a 3-1 lead against Hermantown, uh, two late third period goals, uh, kind of nodded that up. So that was one challenge, but coming back is something that they have. You know, preserving the lead is one challenge, but coming back from being down by a goal is another one. So they, they showed some characters, you said, and I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that follows Eden Prairie's program. Definitely searching for the identity here in the early part of the season. Nice little subtle move by Jones. They shoot. Yep. Oh, what a save by Asperum. Oh, threw the stick at that one up off the netting. That's as good as it gets right there. And right I, out of the air. We'll have to see the replay, but I think that was Nick Nielsen that actually got his busy Watch stick in front of that one. Nice. Yeah, that was a nice move. Just a little delay on that one. Drew everybody in. But, again, a wide open net. Watch the stick here, though. Come across by the goaltender. Pink right there. Okay, so it, it was the goaltender. Nice, Absolutely. Nice recovery by Aspro. Bizarre with it. Right wing side, Larson. Now it's going to be Green to turn this one up ice. Ran out of real estate, but quickly off the boards for Jones. Will Height coming over. Nothing doing there as Bizarre will ring the boards. The big carom to the right wing side for the Elks. Offensive zone time now, not for long, as it's played back into the the zone that's underneath the stick. Nope. Icing the call. Well, I, I, I'm starting to kind of like the the junker, uh, Tayo Larson, uh, tandem on defense. Tayo has been jumping into the play late in the second period, early in this third period, so trying to provide an offensive spark where Evan Junker is mining the, mining the store and doing a good job of, of challenging the Eden Prairie forwards on their breakout. So nice job by Junker on that one. Face off win. Big shot from the point. Misses the mark. Karam rolls for... Mike era for the Eagles back up out of the zone. Off the glass it goes. Jensen chases it down. He'll carry it up high. Gives off to Irwin to the corner. Irwin looks out front. Ooh, that's off the stick. And Esperin was there to cover that one up. You know, I think that was a conscious play by Irwin. He, he was going wide, got a little got a little deep. Didn't see any support out front, so tried to bank it in off Esperin. So kind of a heady play by the by the senior captain on that one. Almost had success, but uh, good support for Elk River in front. So no real huge threat, but I like the thought process on that one. Shots pushed to the corner. Larson was there. Look out. Lesko bothering him. Tried to come away with it. Back in, out of the zone now, Perbix. Left wing on the outlet. Here they go across the line. Back down low for Perbix. Tried to play this one through. Poke to safety, rolling puck up high. Nice little wrist shot there from the line. That's wide of the mark by Brockman. Elks in the offensive zone now. They try to cycle out of the corner. In possession up high. Defensive tussle between these two teams. I say by Dietrich, the goalies have been big when they've had to be. Ooh, turnover at the line. Here comes Jensen. He can skate. Jensen with an angle. Scores! Off the glove and into the back of the net. The Eagles take the 3-2 to two lead. Well, you have to feel for Esperman and goal when you see Jack Jensen with a head of, head of steam coming at you with possession. Uh, boy, that's kind of a trying moment. He came out and challenged, but uh, Jensen very good. You can see the misplay at the blue line. Jensen coming in with speed. Had a good look, went glove side, about a foot and a half off the ice. Boy, that's a tough save to make for any goaltender, but but Jensen uh, took advantage of an opportunity and made a count, giving his team not only a one-goal lead, but some energy as well. Up to, up to Elk River to respond uh, after this goal, but you can see it again. He's just got great speed, but there are a few players that can really can control the puck and be effective at the high speeds, and I view it as kind of the, the Noel Ron factor, the, the Nick Checo factor to kind of go back. Uh, players that can uh, possess the puck at a high rate of speed. Very impressive. Down low they go. That goes through traffic. Glove save Dietrich as he looks it in. So as of course you heard it's the second goal of the game for Jack Jensen off the turnover. In his fourth goal of the season. Nice play by Junker on that one to hold it in. Took a good quick shot, uh, found its way to the net, gave himself a, an opportunity for some offensive uh, wherewithal, but Dietrich once again makes the save, holds on to the rebound. Behind the net it goes. Ooh, in on goal. That 
goes off the gobbler of Dietrich and into the glove. Boy, that's like a Negro knuckleball coming in. He did a good job of making his Sinker body big too. and receive that one. <laughs> but those can sometimes, as you all know. without the Emory board? <laughs> I don't know. I think I see it over there about five feet away. Boy, he did a great job of selling that one, huh? Very inconspicuous, but, uh, but I digress. But, again, uh, Dietrich's done a good job of, of maintaining a level of calm, too. A lot of activity, and he's he's been very calm in goal, and that's uh, got to be something that uh, gives confidence to his defenders as well. Corner it goes, up to the line, Junker. A couple of assists added. That turnover, oh, that's interesting. Jones with it. Oh, he tried to go high. So Langfels and Irwin added to the assist column. There's a shot by Pager, steered aside, back in behind the net. Grain is there, net gets knocked off its post. 9.46 to go in the third period. Well, that's the first time I think the net's been knocked off on the north side of uh, the West Arena. Or Arena. either side. <laughs> Come to think of it. But the official scoring was Jensen with his fourth from Langfels and Irwin at 6.12, even strength goal. That's Irwin's second apple of the day, uh, getting involved on in the offensive side, but mining his defensive responsibilities as well. Well, it's now the south side of the arena because for the Edina games, they go to the net with such abandon. <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what good teams do. Back in behind the net it goes. They play the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks. We're going to unveil the Hornets here in the state of hockey. Boy, what a team they are. I'm eager to see the skills and the speed. Always an entertaining game. Set up behind the net. Outlet to the right wing side. They look ahead. Irwin with it. Off the boards. Now it's going to be Jensen. Try to play it to the slot area. Nothing doing there. Bumped off the boards. Nice breakout for Bizal. Bizal took that one from Simon. Chucked on the play then. Near side it goes. Sent right back in. Pad save. Dietrich hangs on to that. Rebound the way he wants to. And it's going to be handled by Foss. Eagles now holding a one goal lead with 8.46 to go in the third period. Foss plays right wing breakout. Young, ahead it goes. On the move, it's lobs across the line. Looking for Humphrey to the corner. He gets railed by Argetsinger into the corner. And out of the zone come the Eagles. Taylor's shot misses the mark high off the glass. Back to the line, Junker into the crest of the Eagle of the goaltender Andrew Dietrich. He'll cover up. Well, uh, good pressure by the Elk River Elks. Obviously, time is becoming a bit of an issue. He just ate 17, as you can see, left in, in regulation time or in this third period. But they're putting heat on. They're getting to Dietrich. They're putting the shots on. But uh, uh, guys like Argetsinger are taking the body, so they're they're making them pay a price to make a play. But uh, Elk River's doing a good job of, of maintaining some pressure. Eagles regroup in their own zone. Irwin sends a pass ahead for Pikowski, who deflects into the Elk zone, picked off of the line. Pikowski has Conan down low. Wide of Esprim. Conan will chase it. Plays back behind. Pikowski is there. Right wing glass it out. It'll trickle back into the Eagles zone. Will it have enough? Yes, for an icing call. Back down the other way we go. Well, uh, again, you don't want too many faceoffs in your own zone. Uh, but Eden Prairie, it seems like uh, guys like Jack Jensen will skate into traffic. Most people try to skate away from traffic. He's not shy, and that's confidence in that player, but it has to have a method to the madness. You, if, if, if you can't get through, what you can do is be a little bit vulnerable in that respect, and any turnover is like a mini power play. So, uh, you know, skating into traffic is one thing. He has the skill to do that, but sometimes in that situation, skill can kind of work against you. Fans, be sure to follow us at My State of Hockey. All the highlights, news, information. You can see uh, segments from our High School Hockey Weekly Show. Other brothers, fantastic from Eden Prairie last week. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Have it all covered for you at My State of, uh, My State of Hockey on Twitter. The boys were at uh, Benil St. Margaret's for a game that featured the Red Knights and the cadets of St. Thomas Academy. St. Thomas Academy had a, a fight put on them from the uh, Red Knights. I was I don't very know impressed. If they were the Red Knights uh, had had themselves a nice weekend. Got uh, worked worked pretty hard by Brainerd. I mean, physically manhandled. Uh, in game one last week. He came back with a really good game against Hermantown, an <laughs> overtime winner there. 
but then showed up against the number four ranked St. Thomas Academy team that I thought looked really good. And then the short list of teams, they're on it. But the Red Knights, they've got plenty of growth. Well, the thing that I like about the Red Knights is they were winning battles to the loose pucks. They were winning battles along the wall. You know, hockey's just a game of one-on-one -on -one battles, and Penelope St. Marcus had great success during that game. Plus, they got a little speed about them, too. Boy, Lee Smith and Tom Gerdes just basically lost anything left of the voice yelling offside. <laughs> I mean, my ears are ringing here. <laughs> well, apparently they heard him anyway, so face off outside the Eden Perry zone. Hands were flailing. <laughs> Yeah, Lee Smith can be a little menacing. Irwin plays it. Bang fells in deep. Look out. Esprim had to handle that when it trickled through as Larson's breakout attempt picked off by Middlestead. Now it's Larson stepping up in the play across the line. Stood up by Irwin. Very physical defenseman here for the Eagles. Good in transition as well. Chipped off to the right side. Offensive zone time. That fails to hit the mark and Larson will be forced to regroup. He looks over to Junker, who will take it from the right side. Sends a left wing pass. Up the ice goes Bazal. Watched by Jensen. Irwin with an angle. Stick safe, turned aside by Dietrich. Now the Eagles will ring the boards once again. That's behind everybody. And the length of the ice it goes. Ran into Matt Birch from the goalie coach for the Eagles last night. Sure. And I asked him uh, what he thought the weekend would have in store for them. And his answer was a very fair, I have no idea. Okay. Really, you know, Rapids, what they are, we'll find out here shortly. And they, they come into the game with a couple of wins, a couple of losses. Yeah. They've had some lineup issues, we all know about that. But fact of the matter remains, uh, It'll be interesting to see how that all shakes down. Well, I think everybody's curious to see how they're going to do against the Dino Boys. It's kind of a tough draw first game into the tournament, but but Grand Rapids, uh, I think their uh, their fans here are a little guarded right now as far as what they have to look forward to, but it should be an exciting contest. But we get to see the Dino Hornets uh, play against last year's champion, so uh, it's got a little charm about it, a little draw. Gabe Holum in goal, as good as it gets. Yeah, he's, he's really kind of the... The backbone of that team he's going to be relied on quite a bit for success this year. Short list for the Brimsek Award. Sure. Smith shovels high in the air to center. Played down with a hand there by Foss. Big check in front of the penalty box area. Boy, you heard all of that. Left wing side it goes. Conan tries to play that one to the corner. Not much real estate there to the line, but walking Argetsinger. Ooh. He's got a quick release. Look out, here they come, back up ice. It's Mass with it. He got caught by Argetsinger, but follow through. Dietrich the save, they score! The puck rolled up on Dietrich and rolls into the back of the net. That's an example of follow the play, go to the net, we're tied at three. Absolutely, and it was a great effort by both sides on that one, and I think it was uh, Michaelis who scored that one. I'm not sure we'll have to wait for the official scoring, but, but boy, uh, it was Argetsinger that put a great effort in to tie him up, but just a, a, war, a war of will on that one, and Elk River uh, won that one. A good initial first save, but then the puck, uh, puck's momentum carried it in, but now we're not at a three, just 5.09 left in this third period, three to three. Pretty good speed, but you can see Argetsinger battling, battling, and I think that if, uh, if they could have had matching numbers, they might have thwarted that effort, but there was only so much that they could do. Boy, the stick went flying. They tried to do everything to keep that puck out of the net, but it had eyes. We're not at a three, 505 left. Taylor stood up by Will Height. energy to the net, Will Height. oh, what a defensive play by Junker, breaks it up, Langfell's bounding puck, and a nice save by Esperum. Whoa, what a finish here. 455 to go in the third, we're not at a three. Late here in the third period, we're tied at three. Off the boards, scores! Oh my word, <laughs> Esprim is flipping out. He has no, I mean, <laughs> there's not much of an argument there. I think it was in the back of the net when he kicked it off after it went in. Boy, he is not a happy guy right now, but what a great, uh, great answer on that one by Eden Curry. Is he holding the puck in the zone? That, went, that was through off the right side before it got knocked off the post. I was watching that one very closely. The official was right there. It was in already, and the net was still on. It was, yep. 
it was well behind him. Behind it. So if you go behind his left leg, the puck was in right there. It was already in. The net's still on. Yep. It's a good goal. Well, I think the ref's proximity was actually pretty good, good on that one, if you could see in the shot. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. But it's very important for Esprim to put that one behind him. He can't let that have any residual uh, negative effect on him. He's just got to get back and tend the goal. But Eden Prairie now has that one goal advantage. The challenge, once again, is back on the shoulders of Eden or the Elk River Elks. Very definitive by the official calling that one. And uh, that from here was a good goal all the way. Off the tape it goes. Pager off the glass. That hits the stick of Langfels. He gets credit for the goal. Now it's Jensen across the line. Pulls it and shoots well wide. That was let's go rather well wide of the mark. And he gets jammed for his efforts there by Lobs. Boy, that was just 20 seconds later that he answered, but uh, but Langfell's got that goal. That's the second of the year from Will Height and Jones at 12-11. To back it up, Michaelis, that's his fifth goal from Junker and Humphrey. But boy, a lot of action in the last uh, minute or so. Bench from the Elks taking exception to that shot after the whistle. Second time they're yelling. Here's Perbix. He has Bazal to the left wing. Irwin off the glass. Nifty play to center. You don't see that one in the box score, but that's towards any zone entry, but here comes Pervix. He's good on that. Across the line, cuts to the middle, tries to leave off, and here come the Eagles back out of the zone. Last go. Check that. That's Jensen. Down low it goes. Asprim the save as they barrel into him. And that one's whistled down. Well, Jensen showed some good speed. Actually worked uh, worked into the zone and worked across. Uh, got to the top of the right dot in uh, and try to get some uh, get some pressure on, but a, a pretty nice defensive play by Joey Foss on that one to hang with him. But but that's what Jensen can do. He not only has speed and skill, but he's got some grit. He went right to that net, and that if you're Coach Lee Smith, you like to see that. Force him to make a play, force him to cover the puck, but uh, face up outside the Elk River zone. 346 left in regulation time. Elk River's got to get going. This one absolutely being contested here tonight off the top of the glass. Michaelis was there with that opportunity. 3.35 to go in the third. Left wing pass, that's off the skates of Conan. Junker was there with him. Conan now, now out of the zone. It's uh, handled there by Larson. Left wing side for Brockman. Carries it deep. In on the play there, that was Eagles Busby. As they'll break back out of the zone. Have to reach out to grab them. Pikowski couldn't get the handle. Have to hustle up to get back on side. As Conan now will dangle across the line on the back end. Sends a pass through for Smith. who Will be content to just play it to the corner. But that was a good read there by Larson. At the line. But taken away there by Bizal for the Elks. 2.50 to go in the third. A couple of late goals here late in the third period of switched the scales it was tied for a moment and then back to an eagle lead in on goal dietrich the save smith clears the zone no ice on the play it's going to be Esprim to sling this one the length of the air up to the uh, blue line there rather and it's sent back in by bazal perbix is there bazal as well taken away by grain eagle player goes down there goes grain he goes down oh my word was that knee on knee it looked like it yeah he's going to hobble to the bench oh he looks like he's okay a little bit shaken up yeah, just a little shock to the system, but the fact he got up right away and skated off is, is very encouraging. But you can see it right there. It was an unintended knee to knee. Uh, yeah, it looked but, like it was more knee to thigh. And it looked like it grazed him a bit, so it probably just shocked him a little bit, but I don't think it's any any consequence. But obviously, you want everybody to be healthy and happy. What we're going to see from Elk River is, is uh, the defense are going to have to jump into the play if they can get possession. But that's the challenge in front of them is get possession against a very tenacious uh, Eden Prairie team, especially on the forecheck. Left wing on the outlet, it goes back up through center. On the stick there of Lobs, loses the handle. Now it's going to be Jensen. Now two minutes remaining here in the third. Jensen winding it up. The Eagles looking for their second straight win here on the season. Make that third straight win on the season. Esper makes the save. That was a good save. Absolutely. Argetsinger is there. Jensen plays it down. Bothered on the play. Argett Singer shot deflects off an elk up off the netting. Well, and I'm not trying to put a coach's head on, but uh, 
Uh, out comes the Perbix uh, line with Michaelis and, and Simon again, so the big hitters are coming out. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a timeout relatively soon just to rest the ones. They're going to go out and uh, and give what they have, and I think I'm looking forward to probably a timeout to rest them again. But one big final push, minute 40 seconds left by this Elk River Elks team. We will keep our eye on Esperum. Yep. Offside at the line. Now down to minute 31. Well, you know, gauging when they're going to pull the goaltender has been a bit of a challenge. We've seen them pull it two minutes, three minutes, four minutes in, in certain cases. But I think if Elk River can maintain some possession, we're going to see Esperum come off for that extra attacker and that one final push. But uh, time is of the essence. As if uh, going against Eden Prairie isn't hard enough, now they have to contend with the clock as well. You really do want possession uh, when you get that goaltender. Back up into the neutral zone it goes. Here comes Jones. Right wing side, drop pass for Grain. Glad to see he's no harm, no foul there. Right wing side they go. Michaelis, there goes Esperim off the ice. Now the extra attacker is on. Eagles from center. Nice little play. Jones, oh, pickpocketed by Brockman. Mark the tape. We're under one minute remaining in the third period right now. That's off a stick as it rolls up to the line. Poke to center, down goes Jones. Eagles want a penalty, they're not gonna get it as it's gonna be handled to the near side by Foss. In front of the bench area, Eagles clogging up the neutral zone, doing a nice job, not giving the Elks opportunity to transition. Again, it's Foss with it. Gets to the center red, he's gonna chip it to the corner. Irwin with Langfells on the back line. Four check ensues. Lesko is there, he's gonna go high in the air. Does not hit the ceiling, bounding puck. It's gonna make it for an icing call. Didn't quite uh, get the soft lie he was looking for there. No, you are correct. Look at this right here, that's... Boy, that's... A great pickoff right that's, there. That's sticking with the play right there. Kind of a vulnerable moment as he got really kind of behind him, but uh, he never quit on the play, and that's a prime example of why he did a good job of, of what would have been a, a for sure goal with an open net and pushed the play back up the ice again, so a uh, solid play. And this is, I think, the timeout that we were talking about. This is a good chance to settle the kids down. 22 seconds is an awful long period of time if you're Elk, if you're Eden Prairie, but if you're Elk River, that's going to go very, very quick. So obviously it's paramount that they win the faceoff with possession, but they just need to get some shots on goal and get some traffic in front of... Uh, of Dietrich, uh, try to take his sidelines away. Easier said than done the way this Eden Prairie uh, defense has been playing tonight. They've been given their de their goaltender you know, reasonably good sidelines, and when he sees it, he can generally save it. But uh, the challenge, obviously, is is in front of the Elks, and it's a it is a big challenge. It's certainly something they could rise to the occasion. But but Eden Prairie, the way they're playing defensively, is, is not going to be easy. That's uh, that's goes without saying. Tonight's coverage is presented by, of course, Axe available at Target stores. Beauty status, bold character inspired by hockey lifestyle. Laura Stem power skating. And then of course, Tradition Companies. The title of this great weekend of hockey, the Tradition Edina Holiday Classic. And we appreciate all the sponsors. Please support them. I might even go out and try some Max Pete. Maybe that's a missing ingredient right there. There's uh, samples for you. Be sure to stop by Sierra Street team here from the state of hockey, thestateofhockey.com selling swag. I'm seeing sweatshirts. I'm seeing hats. Sam and her team are moving product. There's some product. Ooh, big win by Eden Prairie on that. They ring it, but not out. Elks will be forced to try to play it from the corner to the slot. They have time from the right point. Shot, block, shot, score! Oh my. That is why you take your time out. That's why you ride it up. We're tied at four. Well, it all started from that face-off. Eden Prairie won the, the face-off, but tried to ring it around the wall. And nice job by Elk River to get over there and cut that one off. But uh, you can see that, and that's Michaelis' second goal of the game, his sixth of the season, in the right spot at the right time. Just separated himself from the crowd. A lot of support in front of the Eden Prairie goaltender. That might have worked against him a little bit, but he made the initial save. But boy, once it came out to Michaelis, didn't make any mistakes about it. That's a big goal. Just 10.5 seconds left in this game. Tie it up. He's going to be thinking about that for a while. But now it's time to get back to work. Here comes Perbix. He's not done. He's going to walk it down low. Perbix shoots. Rebound. Oh, that went right under the stick. They had a chance to win it right there. Oh, and a shot on goal that bounced up on the goaltender, Esperum. 
Oh, my word. Well, kind of an alley situation with Perbix coming in, drew the defender in, and went outside, got a good shot on goal. But again, that rebound kind of trickled out. Eden Perry might have been a little fortunate on that one. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of hard work going on. But what a, what a contest to open up this Edina Holiday Tournament. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll have more coming up for you from Braemar Arena. We're tying it for overtime is next. It's time to maximize your speed. For over 40 years, we've trained the best in the game to skate better. New player or pro, you'll learn the same techniques as the Rangers, the Devils, the Swedish national team, and so many more of the world's top players. Are you ready to explode at the drop of the puck? Ready to break away from the pack? Then your time is now. In. <laughs> here we go into overtime, ladies and gentlemen. What a game we've had here. Elk River and Eden Prairie opening up. Not leaving anybody disappointed as the crowd is beginning to uh, file in. No, actually, a pretty good crowd out here. Uh, obviously looking forward to the Edina Grand Rapids game, but, uh, boy, if you got here late, you're missing a good one. Hopefully they're streaming it live, Pete Wagner. Plenty have been. There's a shot that's blocked. Irwin off the boards. Middle stat to center. Played to safety. Up across the line. Oh, running into a check was Perbix. Langfels is there. It was a good job by Irwin to step up and stop that attack. There's a shot. Ooh, stopped there by Esperum. And we'll face off inside the Elk River zone. You know, I had a conversation with somebody going into this game, and they thought that goaltending uh, might be a bit of a question for the Elk River Elks. And if you look at the body of work that they've had in recent years, Anders Frankie, Max Bergwa, Benny Myers last year. So he's he got some sh good big shoes to fill, but I think he's a very capable goaltender. He's played a, a very solid game tonight. In on goal again. Again, a defensive zone faceoff for the Elks. They had great success in the first period, but Eden Perry's really kind of balanced those scales. Faceoff's very important, obviously, in overtime. Poke back down the line. Off the skates, back in the center. Poke it to neutral. Langfels is there. And now it's going to be the Elks again. They're in their whites. Head to Humphrey, who stood up by Irwin. And now the Eagles will try to work the neutral zone. Uh oh, here's numbers back the other way for the Elks. Holding and shooting stick save Dietrich. Wisely just turns that right up. Well, that was Lobs. That, I believe that was Lobs that actually used his body to protect that puck. Really bounced the Eden Prairie defender off him. And got in and got a pretty good pretty good shot on goal. Ramped up and out of play. Faceoff is going to be in the Eden Prairie zone to Dietrich's right. Uh, but pretty good look by Elk River on that one. But boy, P, you can feel the intensity in the crowd a little bit. It got a little quiet there, but it, it's like there was a little bit of a buzz. So everybody's kind of getting into this, which they should. Great hockey game so it far. It's a great hockey game between two good ones. Now it's going to be Argot Singer, Busby. 
lays it ahead for Jones, too far in on goal. Esperum plays back behind for Lobs. A rolling puck toward Dietrich, no ice on the play, so he'll set up for Busby, who will sling it up on the near board, or the uh, left wing boards for Green. That gets away from the Eagles. Will Height back into the zone it goes. Wrist shot wide of the mark. This has got the marks of a three, a four-four tie written all over. It kind of does. They get it? that feeling. Well, they, it's not like they're playing close to the vest, but they're being very calculated, and they're airing on the side of defense. So nobody's going to take too many chances unless it presents himself. But uh, I think everybody's going to play a little bit conservative. But I think line change is very important to kind of get the fresh legs out there. Trying to defend in overtime with tired legs is a very tall order. So look for quick line changes, but you want your primaries out there as much as possible. Shot blocked. There's another opportunity. Why? Didn't look like Dietrich saw that to the last second. I don't think he saw that uh, until it was by him. You're right. Young is there, stood up on the play. Irwin through. That's into the bench area. Bring it back inside, I believe they're calling for the faceoff. Yeah, I believe you're right. So here's what's going to happen. It's going to be Edina and Grand Rapids coming up next right here from Braemar Arena. We'll take... But they have their 10 minutes for warm-up and about 10 minutes to do the ice. So it'll be about 20 minutes between the game. You know, typically we're fashionably late here uh, at, uh, you know, it's funny. They say 6 o'clock. The toe on that one was Dietrich. What a save. That might oh. have been a blade of his skate. There wasn't uh, much room for error on that one, but he kept the puck out of the net. What a great save for Dietrich. Utilized his equipment. Wasn't fooled on that move by Purvix. And a hand pass whistled down. Peter, one of, the, one of the players on the Seedenbury team that I don't think gets a lot of recognition, but uh, I, I know that you and Gino have done a good job of, of promoing him. Ryan Lesko, number 19 on the Seedenbury squad, he just does so many things well out on the ice. Solid. Maybe doesn't get a lot of the fanfare. He doesn't have the name that draws people's attention, but he just goes out and really forces Elk River to defend. He's got good speed. He's working the wall. He's skating his lanes. He's really had an outstanding game tonight. A very solid player. Tire blown there by Busby. As he'll play this one back up the neutral zone. Away from Argetsinger. Four check ensues. Lobs was there. Off the boards are looking for Smith. Busby comes away with it. Lays it up on the way. Across the line. There's Conan. His shot is blocked. Back in behind the net. Conan again. We're now midway through the overtime session. Conan with it. Batted out of the air by Smith. Plays that one back in behind. Jensen in front. That one's turned aside and out of the zone. It goes, uh oh, look out. Busby lost his edge there as it was Perbix, who's out every other shift. Now they'll play this one back up through. Chipped off the boards to the wing and not out. Elks will continue the four check. 3.31 to go in the overtime session. Eagles protect. Now it's going to be Irwin. Back to the corner for Grain. He has a goal tonight. Jones had Will Height there. Away from Will Height. Irwin plays it down to the stick. No hand pass, they say. Shoveled up through everyone. It's going to be Langfels, and Dietrich wisely <laughs> covers that one up. No, nah, that's a good decision by Dietrich. Uh, you know, gives him the opportunity to change the lines, get some fresh legs out there. But, but Busby, boy, you have to feel for him. He's in no man's land, kind of taken off from the blue line, and then uh, the lugs weren't fastened to the wheels, and he kind of started to wobble a little bit. But he made a nice recovery play. But one thing you'll notice in overtime is the defense bail out of the zone a little bit quicker now. So, uh, you know, the pacing is a little bit skewed. So there's going to be a little bit more room if they keep popping out early. Uh, but it's the appropriate play. You want to err on the side of defense. Shot was blocked and slung back into the zone. Argit Singer is there. Looks to his left, now to his right. Outlets to Middlestat. Too far for Jensen. They'll play that one back, blue line to blue line. Elks will control, 240 to go in overtime. Young gains Eden Prairie turf. In on goal is Dietrich's there to make the save. Well, Griffin Young's one of the players on this Elk River squad that can score, but it was a good challenge by the Eden Prairie defender. Put himself in good proximity between the puck and the goal and really forced Jones to take that shot uh, a little bit earlier uh, than he wanted. Or Griffin Young, I'm sorry. Took that shot a little bit uh, earlier than he wanted, but Dietrich, nice save to corral that puck. Nary a rebound. 
Furbix the faceoff, turned and played oh. in by Dylan Brand. That was offside. Irwin with it. We play. <laughs> we'll take a look at that. Now it's <laughs> going to be uh, Grain with it down low. Oh, nice job to do a little stutter, stutter step a to create some space. Right yeah, on. nice. Langfels has been a point producing machine. Very Bobby Orr like with the sweater number. Grain. Those are for the old schoolers watching. He can if there dangle, are any he left. can score. It must be Bobby who Orr. Else, who else? Bobby Orr. <laughs> My favorite line of all time. To the line. Irwin's going to play this behind. 156 to go. Elks with a very cautious overtime stanza here. Don't blame him. No. Langfels plays it. You don't want to give up anything cheap. But both of these uh, both of these teams, if they see an opportunity, they're going to take it. They just, again, have to err on the side of caution. Here they go. Back up ice. Elks with a chance. Dietrich the save. Pokes it away with his goal stick to the right. Now it's going to be the Elks off the end boards. Brockman was there. Left side. There's a shot traffic. That doesn't get through as it hit Perbix on its way in. Now it's Smith. Cross center ice. Nice little pass for Pikowski. Couldn't handle, though, as it's traffic that gave him trouble. Now Michael is with it. Nice pass. Shot. Scores! Griffin Young with a pass from Michaelis. Zach Michaelis with a nice little feed. And the Elk River Elks pick up the 5-4 win over the Eden Prairie Eagles. Well, and that's Griffin Young's fourth goal of the year, but what a big one it is. And, and really uh, beat the goaltender clean. Goaltender had good positioning, but just beat him, I believe, uh, 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 low on the short side. But, uh, boy, what a big goal it was. And you really have to take your hat off to the Elk River Elks. I mean, scoring with 10.5 left and then winning it in overtime against a very good Eden Prairie squad. Well, and they didn't give up. You know, things are tough late in the game. 10.5 yep. seconds, they tie. And here they go. They win it in overtime. <laughs> Bart, that's going to do it here for this game. We're going to set up the Edina Grand Rapids game. We'll be off the air momentarily and then back on the air. Uh, once again, your final score, the Elk River Elks in overtime, 5-4 to four over the Eden Prairie Eagles. For Bart Archer, I'm Pete Wagner. Good night, everybody. Air about ankle high off the wall and into the other end it goes for an icing call. Well, I do like the response from the Elk River Elks after getting scored on. It was a very athletic play that beat Esperon, but what they did is they came back with possession, actually got some zone time, but uh, very, very impressed with the way Eden Prairie is, is working the puck down low, but even equally impressed with the Elks uh, congesting between the dots. They really aren't giving him good looks at the, at the rink. It just took a very athletic play to get success. Rolling puck, ooh, nice job to be pulled out of there. Irwin was chasing, and the bigger play there by Langefeld, as they'll play this off the board. A little check thrown there. And it's gonna be picked and played to the left wing side. Across the line, Lesko with it. Oh, look at that, plays it up to himself. Nothing there, shot on goal, nice save made by Esperum. Middle stat. Right wing side, wide of the net. And it's gonna be Jensen again as he's checked on the play. Plays it back down the wall. Lasko comes together with his man on the play. That was Larson. Larson and Lasko from the corner. Jensen, now it's gonna be shoveled ahead and out of the zone. On the tape, right wing side for Simon. Perbix now, oh look at that, tried to get around his man, couldn't get all the way around they score how did that find the back of the net it does and we're tied at one yeah we may have to look at the re uh, the replay but i think that was bizarre that actually uh, finished that play out that'd be a seventh goal of the year but but kind of an owly zone entrance by the elk river elves made uh, eden prairie pretty good defense but just law blew a tire on that one and that was Irwin that went down but i think that was perfect that actually uh, finished that play off but just a fortunate situation for the elks right there just kind of didn't get that edge and found the open net but it all started with speed through the neutral zone, got it. The head man, the quickest way up the ice is head manning the puck, and he got it to the proper guy. 
and he finished that play from a bad angle. We've had two bad angle shots and two very athletic plays by the forwards. That's an example of having to honor Perbix and his ability with the puck and an open ice, and he does such a nice job. Absolutely, but they gave that blue line away a little bit. They're a little soft on the blue line on that one, but that could be just the circumstance. But he, Eden Prairie's done such a good job of stepping up and defending. Once they put a chink in the armor, Eden, uh, Elk River made a count. Face-off win by the Elks as they look to play that one toward the goal mouth area as it's the Eagles that work their way out of the zone. To the near side it goes. Foss played down in the stride there by Young. Nice job to play that out of the air. He's walked Ooh. by Pager who jams him. Penalty coming up. Bart Archer called that from about 240 feet away. And that was reflex, too. I, I apologize for that, but he got him pretty good. He's up, no words for the wear, but he, Eden Prairie's going to spend two minutes in the box. Great time for the Elk River uh, to kind of settle down a little. Back to the line, Junker into the crest of the eagle of the goaltender, Andrew Dietrich. He'll cover up. Well, uh, good pressure by the Elk River Elks. Obviously, time is becoming a bit of an issue. He just ate 17, as you can see, left in, in regulation time or in this third period. But they're putting heat on. They're getting to Dietrich. They're putting the shots on. But uh, uh, guys like Argetsinger are, are taking the body, so they're they're making them pay a price to make a play. But uh, Elk River's doing a good job of, of maintaining some pressure. Eagles regroup in their own zone. Irwin sends a pass ahead for Pikowski, who deflects into the Elk zone, picked off of the line. Pikowski has Conan down low. Wide of Esperim. Conan will chase it. Plays back behind. Pikowski is there. Right wing glass it out. It'll trickle back into the Eagles zone. Will it have enough? Yes, for an icing call. Back down the other way we go. Well, uh, again, you don't want too many faceoffs in your own zone. Uh, but Eden Prairie, it seems like uh, guys like Jack Jensen will skate into traffic. Most people try to skate away from traffic. He's not shy, and that's confidence in that player, but it has to have a method to the madness. You, if, if, if you can't get through, what you can do is be a, a little bit vulnerable in that respect, and any turnover is like a mini power play. So, uh, you know, skating into traffic is one thing. He has the skill to do that, but sometimes in that situation, skill can kind of work against you. Fans, be sure to follow us at My State of Hockey. All the highlights, news, information. You can see uh, segments from our High School Hockey Weekly show. Other brothers, fantastic from Eden Prairie last week. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Have it all covered for you at My State of, uh, My State of Hockey on Twitter. The boys were at uh, Benilde St. Margaret's for a game that featured the Red Knights and the cadets of St. Thomas Academy. St. Thomas Academy had a, a fight put on them from the uh, Red Knights. I was I very impressed. The Red Knights uh, had, had themselves a nice weekend. Got uh, worked, worked pretty hard by Brainerd. I mean, physically manhandled. Uh, in game one last week. He came back with a really good game against Hermantown, an yep. overtime winner there. But then showed up against the number four ranked St. Thomas Academy team that I thought looked really good. And then the short list of teams, they're on it. But the Red Knights, they've got plenty of growth. Well, the thing that I like about the Red Knights is they were winning battles to the loose pucks. They were winning battles along the wall. You know, hockey's just a game of one-on-one -on -one battles and Penelope Marcus had great success during that game. Plus, they got a little speed about him, too. Boy, Lee Smith and Tom Gerdes just basically lost anything left of the voice yelling offside. <laughs> I mean, my ears are ringing here. <laughs> well, apparently they heard him anyway, so face off outside the Eden Prairie zone. Hands were flailing. <laughs> yeah, Lee Smith can be a little menacing. Irwin plays it. Bang fells. Offside at the line. Now down to minute 31. Well, you know, gauging when they're going to pull the goaltender has been a bit of a challenge. We've seen them pull it two minutes, three minutes, four minutes in, in certain cases. But I think if Elk River can maintain some possession, we're going to see Esprim come off for that extra attacker and that one final push. But uh, time is of the essence. As if uh, going against Eden Prairie isn't hard enough, now they have to contend with the clock as well. You really do want possession uh, when you get that goaltender. Back up into the neutral zone it goes. Here comes Jones. Right wing side, drop pass for Grain. Glad to see he's no harm, no foul there. Right wing side they go. Michaelis, there goes Esperim off the ice. Now the extra attacker is on. Eagles from center. Nice little play. Jones, oh, pickpocketed by Brockman. Mark the tape. We're under one minute remaining in the third period right now. 
That's off a stick as it rolls up to the line. Poke to center, down goes Jones. Eagles want a penalty, they're not gonna get it as it's gonna be handled to the near side by Foss. In front of the bench area. Eagles clogging up the neutral zone, doing a nice job, not giving the Elks opportunity to transition. Again, it's Foss with it. Gets to the center red, he's gonna chip it to the corner. Irwin with Langfels on the back line. Four check ensues. Lesko is there, he's gonna go high in the air. Does not hit the ceiling, bounding puck. It's gonna make it for an icing call. Didn't quite uh, get the soft lie he was looking for there. No, you are correct. Look at this right here, that's... Boy, that's... A great pickoff right that's, there. That's sticking with the play right there. Kind of a vulnerable moment as he got really kind of behind him, but uh, he never quit on the play, and that's a prime example of why he did a good job of, of what would have been a, a for-sure goal with an open net and pushed the play back up the ice again. So a uh, solid play. And this is, I think, the timeout that we were talking about. This is a good chance to settle the kids down. 22 seconds is an awful long period of time if you're Elk, if you're Eden Prairie, but if you're Elk River, that's going to go very, very quick. So obviously it's paramount that they win the face up with possession, but they just need to get some shots on goal and get some traffic in front of uh, of Dietrich. Uh, try to take his sidelines away. Easier said than done the way this Eden Prairie uh, defense has been playing tonight. They've been given their, de their goaltender reasonably good sight lines, and when he sees it, he can generally save it. But uh, the challenge, obviously, is is in front of the Elks, and it's a, and it's a big challenge. It's certainly something they could rise to the occasion, but but Eden Prairie, the way they're playing defensively, is, is not going to be easy. That uh, that's, goes without saying. Tonight's coverage is presented by, of course, Axe, available at Target stores. Beauty status, bold character, inspired by hockey lifestyle. Laura Stem power skating. And then, of course, Tradition Companies. The title of Gabe Holum in goal, as good as it gets. Yeah, he's, he's really kind of the, the backbone of that team. He's going to be relied on quite a bit for success this year. Short list for the Brimsek Award. Sure. Smith shovels high in the air to center. Played down with a hand there by Foss. Big check in front of the penalty box area. Boy, you he heard all of that. Left wing side it goes. Conan tries to play that one to the corner. Not much real estate there to the line, but walking Argetsinger, ooh, he's got a quick release. Look out, here they come, back up ice. It's Mass with it. He got caught by Argetsinger, but follow through. Dietrich the save, they score! The puck rolled up on Dietrich and rolls into the back of the net. That's an example of follow the play, go to the net, we're tied at three. Absolutely, and it was a great effort by both sides on that one, and I think it was uh, Michaelis has scored that one. I'm not sure we'll have to wait for the official scoring, but but boy, uh, it was Argensinger that put a great effort in to tie him up, but just a, a, war, a war of will on that one, and Elk River uh, won that one. A good initial first save, but then the puck, uh, puck's momentum carried it in, but now we're not at a three, just 5.09 left in this third period, three to three. Pretty good speed, but you can see Argensinger battling, battling, and I think that if, uh, if they could have had matching numbers. They might have thwarted that effort, but there was only so much that they could do. Boy, the stick went flying. They tried to do everything to keep that puck out of the net, but it had eyes. We're not at a three. 5.05 left. Taylor stood up by Will Height. Energy to the net. Will Height. Oh, what a defensive play by Junker. Breaks it up. Langfell's bounding puck and a nice save by Asperum. Whoa, what a finish here. 4.55 to go in the third. We're not at a three. Late here in the third period, we're tied at three. Off the boards, scores! Oh my word, <laughs> Esperum is flipping out. He has no, I mean, <laughs> there's not much of an argument there. I think it was in the back of the net when he kicked it off after it went in. Boy, he is not a happy guy right now, but what a great, uh, great answer on that one by Eden Prairie. Is he holding the puck in the zone? That went, that was through off the right side before it got knocked off the post. I was watching that one very closely. The official was right there. It was in already, and the net was still on. It, yep. was, it was well behind him, behind it. So if you go behind his left leg, the puck was in right there. It was already in. The net's still on. Yep. It's a good goal. Well, I think the ref's proximity was actually pretty good, good on that one, if you could see in the shot. Ah, yeah. uh, but it's very important for Esprim to put that one behind him. He can't let that have any residual uh, negative effect on him. He's just got to get back and tend the goal. But Eden Prairie now has that one goal advantage. 
challenge once again is back on the shoulders of Eden or the other. You're looking live at Bremer Arena, home of the Edina Holiday Classic. It's the tradition Edina Holiday Classic right here on the stateofhockey.com, presented by Axe, available at Target stores. Now, Bart Archer, I'll tell you what, uh, this year, this time, something we look forward to each and every year. Yeah, and I can't say it enough. It, it didn't come quick enough, but I, I've always liked this tournament because always very uh, four very good competitive teams, plus it simulates a state tournament format, three games and three nights against solid competition. So the coaches get an idea of where their uh, team sits. Might not answer all the questions, but it'll certainly answer some of the questions, but I'm looking forward to getting started. Well, we always like, we always like to say it's three different games on three different days. It forces uh, teams to have to deal with... Uh, uh, being able to come back each day to make a play. Oh, absolutely. But uh, they're young kids with a lot of enthusiasm. I think they kind of like this as well. But, again, it gives them a chance to get in front of a lot of people. We're going to be very well represented tonight. Whether you're a beginner or deep into the game, it's time to maximize your speed, your power, your agility. It's time to be the first to the puck and the first to the net. For over 40 years, we've trained the best in the game to skate better. You'll see the difference in just hours. 
No one breaks down the perfect stride like we do. New player or pro, you'll learn the same techniques as the Rangers, the Devils, the Swedish national team, and so many more of the world's top players. Are you ready to explode at the drop of the puck? Ready to break away from the pack? Then your time is now. taken off from the blue line and then uh, the lugs weren't fast into the wheels and he kind of started to wobble a little bit but he made a nice recovery play but one thing you'll notice in overtime is the defense bail out of the zone a little bit quicker now so uh, you know the pacing is a little bit skewed so there's going to be a little bit more room if they keep popping out early uh, but it's the appropriate play you want to err on the side of defense shot was blocked and slung back into the zone Argit Singer is there looks to his left now to his right outlets to Middlestat too far for Jensen They'll play that one back, blue line to blue line. Elks will control, 240 to go in overtime. Young gains Eden Prairie turf. In on goal is Dietrichs there to make the save. Well, Griffin Young's one of the players on this Elk River squad that can score, but it was a good challenge by the Eden Prairie defender. Put himself in good proximity between the puck and the goal and really forced Jones to take that shot uh, a little bit earlier uh, than he wanted. Or Griffin Young, I'm sorry. Took that shot a little bit uh, earlier than he wanted, but Dietrich, nice save to corral that puck. Nary a rebound. Perbix the faceoff, turned and played oh. by Hillenbrand. That was offside. Irwin with it. We play. <laughs> we'll take a look at that. Now it's <laughs> going to be uh, Grain with it down low. Oh, nice job to do a little stutter, stutter step. A little misdirection, space. Right Yeah, on. nice. Langfels has been a point-producing machine. Very Bobby Orlake with the sweater number. Green. Those are for the old schoolers watching. He can dangle. He left. can score. It must be Bobby who Orr. Else, who else? Bobby Orr. <laughs> My favorite line of all time. To the line. Everyone's going to play this behind. 156 to go. Elks with a very cautious overtime stanza here. Don't blame him. No. Langfels plays it. You don't want to give up anything cheap. But both of these uh, both of these teams, if they see an opportunity, they're going to take it. They just, again, have to err on the side of caution. Here they go. Back up ice. Alex with a chance. Dietrich to save. Pokes it away with his goal stick to the right. Now it's going to be the Elks off the end boards. Brockman was there. Left side. There's a shot. Traffic that doesn't get through as it hit Perbix on its way in. Now it's Smith. Cross center ice. Nice little pass for Pikowski. Couldn't handle, though, as it's traffic that gave him trouble now Michael is with it nice pass shot scores Griffin Young with a pass from Michael Zach Michael with a nice little feed and the Elk River Elks pick up the five to four win over the Eden Prairie Eagles well and that's Griffin Young's fourth goal of the year but what a big one it is and and really uh, beat the goaltender clean goaltender had good positioning but just beat him I believe uh, 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 low on the short side, but uh, boy, what a big goal it was. And you really have to take your hat off to the Elk River Elks. I mean, scoring with. Sure. So, so, sounds fan. Oh, sorry about that. I'll keep going. Yeah. 
Can I ask you a quick question on the uh, sustainable uh, uh, comment you made? How do you know what is sustainable or not as far as something that would last? What do you look for in that? So that's uh, really incredible advice from Carol Griffith, who's a vice president of sales and marketing for Robert Thomas Holmes, part of Tradition Companies. Uh, really wonderful uh, outreach that your whole company has done for this tournament and youth sports across the metro area. Thank you for uh, telling us a little bit more about Robert Thomas Holmes, and hopefully uh, people will start uh, picking up the phone and calling. You can also be visited at robertthomasholmes.com. Anything else you want to add for contact information, Carol? Sounds good. Thank you for joining us. We'll talk soon. We'll be back with more right after this. This is the Edina Holiday Classic at thestateofhockey.com. Casey, because that's obviously an unfair comparison, but if there's a comparison with those quick hands, I saw traces of uh, uh, the middle stat has the quick hands in the bloodlines, but he got that shot off a little quicker than I think Esperin was ready for it, but he ramped it up and out of play face off to his left. Nice opportunity by middle stat. Very impressed with John Middlestad's game so far as a sophomore. Very mature for a sophomore. In on goal, Esperin the save. Lesko was there. Well, Argent Singer with a nice wrist shot from the point. Uh, that had to make its way through traffic as well, but Esperin did a nice job of tracking that puck. You can see some traffic in front of him, but more importantly, he held on to that. Behind the Eden or the Eden or the Elk River, not cheese. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll I'm starting to rub off There's on no you, Pete. Green I'm sorry. Out there, Bart Archer. <laughs> this is concerning. Now it's going to be Argent Singer with it. Plays it rink wide. Eagles retreat in their own zone. Elk shutting down the neutral zone here oh. in the third, but not now. Here comes Lesko. Oh, kind of dangled a little bit there. Larson pokes it off his stick. There's a fluttering puck wide of the mark taken from the line by Schultz, who will come over and handle with Argetsinger to his left. He better, nice job to get away from yeah, traffic. Nice escape. Now it's going to be Jensen with it. He's going to wind up, loves to do this. Kind of Mike Madano style. Runs right into an Elk player. Left wing side, here comes Humphrey. Hard shot and on goal, handled and covered up by the goaltender, Andrew Dietrich. Yeah, that was Humphrey showing pretty good speed, top of the left dot, took that shot. Dietrich made the initial save, but that puck started to squirt on him a little bit. But when Jensen was starting to ramp up and getting out of his zone, I think he took a, uh, a bit of a slash across the hands, lost his glove, and he kind of looked a little gingerly on that one, so we'll keep an eye to see if it has any ill effects on him. Big carom up to the line, played back, and... High slot area. Nice outlet there by the Eagles. Pikowski looks for Smith. Somehow it works its way up and out of play. Yeah, I think that was a really good challenge at the blue line by the Elk River defender. Smith was coming in with some speed and uh, just tried to backhand it off the boards and play to a particular space. But uh, uh, again, the cutaways up into the Elk River bench face off just outside the Elk River zone. Learned a lot about the Eagles in their 5-2 win against Brainerd last weekend from the Eden Prairie Community Center, the North-South Classic. And it's... Well, Brainerd's a very physical team. They don't give you much space to work. And the Eagles had an opportunity to fight or flight, and they definitely fought and, and, and showed a level of grit and toughness. I was talking to Coach Lee Smith with before the game, and he was very pleased with that component that his team brought. Well, and they were down 2-1, to one, and I think uh, it was four different scores. Middlestead had two goals, but I think four different scores representing the score sheet. That's not a bad thing for the Eden Prairie Eagles. Not a bad thing at all. Laid up through the middle too far, icing the call. Back into the eagle zone we go. Well, Pete, if you look at the, the body of work, Eden Prairie, obviously it's early in the season. Up. Well, 
late here in the third period. We're tied at three. Off the boards, scores! Oh my word, <laughs> Esperum is flipping out. He has no, I mean, <laughs> there's not much of an argument there. I think it was in the back of the net when he kicked it off after it went in. Boy, he is not a happy guy right now, but what a great uh, great answer on that one by Eden Curry. Is he holding the puck in the zone? That went. That was through off the right side before it got knocked off the post. I was watching that one very closely. The official was right there. It was in already, and the net was still on. It was, yep. it was well behind him. Behind it. So if you go behind his left leg, the puck was in right there. It was already in. The net's still on. Yep. It's a good goal. Well, I think the ref's proximity was actually pretty good, good on that one, if you could see in the shot. Ah, yeah. uh, but it's very important for Esprim to put that one behind him. He can't let that have any residual uh, negative effect on him. He's just got to get back and tend the goal. But Eden Prairie now has that one goal advantage. The challenge, once again, is back on the shoulders of Eden or the Elk River Elks. Very definitive by the official calling that one. And uh, that from here was a good goal all the way. Off the tape it goes. Pager off the glass, that hits the stick of Langfels. He gets credit for the goal. Now it's Jensen across the line. Pulls it and shoots well wide. That was let's go rather well wide of the mark. And he gets jammed for his efforts there by Lobs. Boy, that was just 20 seconds later that he answered, but uh, but Langfell's got that goal. That's the second of the year from Will Height and Jones at 12-11. To back it up, Michaelis, that's his fifth goal from Junker and Humphrey. But, boy, a lot of action in the last uh, minute or so. Bench from the Elks taking exception to that shot after the whistle. Second time they're yelling. Here's Perbix. He has Bazal to the left wing. Irwin off the glass. Nifty play to center. You don't see that one in the box score, but that's towards any zone entry, but here comes Pervix. He's good on that. Across the line, cuts to the middle, tries to leave off, and here come the Eagles back out of the zone. Last go. Check that. That's Jensen. Down low it goes. Asperum the save as they barrel into him. And that one's whistled down. Well, Jensen showed some good speed. Actually worked, uh, worked into the zone and worked across. Uh, got to the top of the right dot in... Uh, and try to get some uh, get some pressure on, but a, a pretty nice defensive play by Joey Foss on that one to hang with him. But but that's what Jensen can do. He not only has speed and skill, but he's got some grit. He went right to that net, and that if you're Coach Lee Smith, you like to go. Well, uh, again, you don't want too many faceoffs in your own zone. Uh, but Eden Prairie, it seems like uh, guys like Jack Jensen will skate into traffic. Most people try to skate away from traffic. He's not shy, and that's confidence in that player. But it has to have a method to the madness. You, if, if, if you can't get through, what you can do is be a little bit vulnerable in that respect, and any turnover is like a mini power play. So, uh, you know, skating into traffic is one thing. He has the skill to do that, but sometimes in that situation, skill can kind of work against you. Fans, be sure to follow us at My State of Hockey. All the highlights, news, information. You can see uh, segments from our High School Hockey Weekly Show. Other brothers, fantastic from Eden Prairie last week. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Have it all covered for you at my state, of, uh, my state of Hockey on Twitter. The boys were at uh, Benel St. Margaret's for a game that featured the Red Knights and the cadets of St. Thomas Academy. St. Thomas Academy had a, a fight put on them from the uh, Red Knights. I was I very impressed. The Red Knights uh, had, had themselves a nice weekend. Got uh, worked, worked pretty hard by Brainerd. I mean, physically manhandled. Uh, in game one last week. He came back with a really good game against Hermantown, an <laughs> overtime winner there. But then showed up against the number four ranked St. Thomas Academy team that I thought looked really good. And then the short list of teams, they're on it. But the Red Knights, they've got plenty of growth. Well, the thing that I like about the Red Knights is they were winning battles to the loose pucks. They were winning battles along the wall. You know, hockey's just a game of one-on-one -on -one battles and Penelope St. Marcus had great success during that game. Plus, they got a little speed about him, too. Boy, Lee Smith and Tom Gerdes just basically lost anything left of the voice yelling offside. <laughs> I mean, my ears are ringing here. <laughs> well, apparently they heard him anyway, so face off outside the Eden Perry zone. Hands were flailing. <laughs> yeah, Lee Smith can be a little menacing. Irwin plays it. 
Langfels in deep. Look out. Esprim had to handle that when it trickled through as Larson's breakout attempt picked off by Middlestead. Now it's Larson stepping up in the play across the line. Stood up by Irwin. Very physical defenseman here for the Eagles. Good in transition as well. Chipped off to the right side. Offensive zone time. That fails to hit the mark. And Larson will be forced to regroup. He looks over to Junker, who will take it from the right side. Sends a left wing pass. Up the ice goes Bazal. Watched by Jensen. Irwin with an angle. Stick safe. Turned aside by Dietrich. Now the Eagles will ring the boards once again. That's behind everybody. And the length of the ice it goes. Ran into Matt Birch from the goalie coach for the Eagles last night. Sure. And I asked him uh, what he thought the weekend would have in store for them everywhere. And it's off the boards and sent the length of the ice by Smith icing the call. Well, really a good look by, by the Elk River Elks uh, deep in the Eden Prairie zone. Diedrich a little vulnerable on that one, but you can see the wide open net. Now, nice job of actually closing that, uh, that space and good support by the defenders as well. But it just seems like Dietrich is out challenging, but you have to kind of take pause not to get out too far to where you make yourself vulnerable. But so far, he's done a great job of keeping that puck out of the net with some good opportunities by the Elks. They have a lot of traffic deflections and screens his way. Right wing on the tape across the line. Middle step. Ooh, went up high. Kind of snuck in on Esperum there. Got enough of the elbow on it to deflect it up and out of play. Well, what I wanted to do is stay away from comparing John to Casey because that's obviously an unfair comparison. But if there is a comparison with those quick hands, I saw traces of... Uh, uh, the middle stat has the quick hands in the bloodlines, but he got that shot off a little quicker than I think Esprim was ready for it, but he ramped it up and out of play face off to his left. Nice opportunity by middle stat. Very impressed with John Middlestad's game so far as a sophomore. Very mature for a sophomore. In on goal, Esprim the save. Lesko was there. Well, Argent Singer with a nice wrist shot from the point. Uh, that had to make its way through traffic as well, but Esperin did a nice job of tracking that puck. You can see some traffic in front of him, but more importantly, he held on to that. Behind the Eden, or the Eden, or the Elk River, not cheese. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll I'm starting to rub off on no you, Pete. I'm sorry. Out there, Bart Archer. <laughs> this is concerning. Now it's going to be Argent Singer with it. Plays it rink wide. Eagles retreat in their own zone. Elk shutting down the neutral zone here oh. in the third, but not now. Here comes Lesko. Oh, kind of dangled a little bit there. Larson pokes it off his stick. There's a fluttering puck wide of the mark taken from the line by Schultz, who will come over and handle with Argetsinger to his left. He better, nice job to get away from yeah, traffic. Nice escape. Now it's going to be Jensen with it. He's going to wind up, loves to do this. Kind of Mike Madano style. Runs right into an Elk player. Left wing side, here comes Humphrey. Hard shot and on goal, handled and covered up by the goaltender, Andrew Dietrich. Yeah, that was Humphrey showing pretty good speed, top of the left dot, took that shot. Dietrich made the initial save, but that puck started to squirt on him a little bit. But when Jensen was starting to ramp up and getting out of his zone, I think he took a, uh, a bit of a slash across the hands, lost his glove, and he kind of looked a little gingerly on that one, so we'll keep an eye to see if it has any ill effects on him. Big carom up to the line, played back, and... High slot area. Nice outlet there by the Eagles. Pekowski looks for Smith. Somehow it works its way up and out of play. Yeah, I think that was a really good challenge at the blue line by the Elk River defender. Smith was coming in with some speed and uh, just tried to backhand it off the boards and play to a particular space. But uh, uh, again, the cutaways up into the Elk River bench face off just outside the Elk River zone. Looks up for Will Height to the right wing. Larson watches him. That's deflected away from a stick into center ice. Langfels clears that one right back in. And it's going to be gathered up by Larson. Larson on it. Now Will Height was there. And out of the zone comes Perbix. Poked off his stick. And he's jammed into the wall by Irwin, but stays on it to the corner. Langfels leaves up for Irwin out of the corner. 47 to go in the four on four here. Early stages of period three. Played in front of the Eagles bench. Eagles ranked number nine in this week's Let's Play Hockey rankings that were released on Tuesday. Back behind the net it goes. Langfels looks to cycle that one up the wall. Can't picked off by the Elks, four on four. Larson plays back over for Perbix on the tape. There's a shot that's blocked. That bid by Simon doesn't get through. Played back in behind the net. Pursuing on the play is Lobs. That was Irwin to outlet. Eagles now across the line with a shot on goal by Wilhite that's turned aside by 
Asperum Jones works the wrecking crew in the offensive zone. Bumped on the play and out of the zone they come with lobs. Five on four power play now for the Elks for 24 seconds. Back into the corner it goes. Fished out of there. Nice work by Langfels. Grain comes over. He turns and plays it out off the boards. They love to have the speedsters up front and Grain and Jones usually. Boy, they can get up and down the ice awful quick. Now it's Smith who jumps out. Seven to go. Across the line on it. Now it's Bazal. And they'll turn this one up. Pikowski, nice play. Lays ahead for Smith across the line. Smith, oh, a pass on the stick there for Pikowski. Didn't see it coming. That was nifty. Boy, didn't miss by much either. Now it's Perbix with it. Perbix stood up, top of the slot. Shot that's blocked. Traffic everywhere. And it's off the boards and sent the length of the ice by Smith, icing the call. Well, really a good look by, by the Elk River Elks uh, deep in the Eden Prairie zone. Dietrich a little vulnerable on that one. But you can see the wide open net. Now, nice job of actually closing that uh, that space and good support by the defenders as well. But it just seems like Dietrich is out challenging, but you have to kind of take pause not to get out too far to where you make yourself vulnerable. But so far he's done a great job of keeping that puck out of the net with some good opportunities by the Elks. They have a lot of traffic deflections and screens his way. Right wing on the tape across the line. Middle step. Ooh. Went up high, kind of snuck in on Esperum there. Got enough of the elbow on it to deflect it up and out of play. Well, what I wanted to do is stay away from comparing John to Casey because that's obviously an unfair comparison. But if there is a comparison with those quick hands, I saw traces of uh, uh, the middle set has the quick hands in the bloodlines. But he got that shot off a little quicker than I think Esperum was ready for it. But he ramped it up and out of play face off to his left. Nice opportunity by Middlestad. Very impressed with John Middlestad's game so far as a sophomore. Very mature. Whether you're a beginner or deep into the game, it's time to maximize your speed, your power, your agility. It's time to be the first to the puck and the first to the net. For over 40 years, we've trained the best in the game to skate better. You'll see the difference in just hours. No one breaks down the perfect stride like we do. New player or pro, you'll learn the same techniques as the Rangers, the Devils, the Swedish national team, and so many more of the world's top players. Are you ready to explode at the drop of the puck? Ready to break away from the pack? Then your time is now. Yeah. 
pursuing on the play as lobs. That was Irwin to outlet. Eagles now across the line with a shot on goal by Will Height that's turned aside by Asperum. Jones works the wrecking crew in the offensive zone, bumped on the play, and out of the zone they come with lobs. Five on four power play now for the Elks for 24 seconds. Back into the corner it goes. Fished out of there, nice work by Langfels. Grain comes over, he turns and plays it out off the boards. They love to have the speedsters up front and Grain and Jones usually. Boy, they can get up and down the ice awful quick. Now it's Smith who jumps out, seven to go. Across the line on it, now it's Bazal. And they'll turn this one up. Pikowski, nice play, lays ahead for Smith across the line. Smith, oh, a pass on the stick there for Pikowski. Didn't see it coming, that was nifty. Boy, didn't miss by much either. Now it's Perbix with it. Perbix stood up, top of the slot, shot that's blocked, traffic everywhere. And it's off the boards and sent the length of the ice by Smith, icing the call. Well, really a good look by, by the Elk River Elks uh, deep in the Eden Prairie zone. Diedrich a little vulnerable on that one, but you can see the wide open net. Now, nice job of actually closing that, uh, that space and good support by the defenders as well. But it just seems like Diedrich is out challenging, but you have to kind of take pause not to get out too far to where you make yourself vulnerable. But so far he's done a great job of keeping that puck out of the net with some good opportunities by the Elks. They have a lot of traffic deflections and screens his way. Right wing on the tape across the line. Middle step, ooh, went up high. Kind of snuck in on Esperum there. Got enough of the elbow on it to deflect it up and out of play. Well, what I wanted to do is stay away from comparing John to Casey because that's obviously an unfair comparison. But if there is a comparison with those quick hands, I saw traces of... Uh, uh, the middle stat has the quick hands and the bloodlines, but he got that shot off a little quicker than I think Esperum was ready for it, but he ramped it up and out of play face off to his left. Nice opportunity by middle stat. Very impressed with John Middlestad's game so far as a sophomore. Very mature for a sophomore. In on goal, Esperum the save. Lesko was there. Well, Argent Singer with a nice wrist shot from the point. Uh, that had to make its way through traffic as well, but Esperum did a nice job of tracking that puck. You can see some traffic in front of him, but more importantly, he held on to that. Behind the Eden, or the, Eden, or the Elk River, not cheese. We'll Donna get there. We'll I'm starting out. to rub off There's on no you, Pete. I'm sorry. There's no green out there, Bart Archer. This is concerning. <laughs> now it's going to be Argent Singer with it. Plays it rink wide. Eagles retreat in their own zone. Elk shutting down the neutral zone here oh. in the third, but not now. Here comes Lesko. Oh, kind of dangled a little bit there. Larson pokes it off his stick. There's a fluttering puck wide of the mark taken from the line by Schultz, who will come over and handle with Argetsinger to his left. He better, nice job to get away from yeah, the track. The uh, line with Michaelis and, and Simon again, so the big hitters are coming out. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a timeout relatively soon just to rest the ones. They're going to go out and, uh, and give what they have, and I think I'm looking forward to probably a timeout to rest them again. But one big final push, minute 40 seconds left by this Elk River Elks team. We will keep our eye on Esperum. Yep. Offside at the line. Now down to minute 31. Well, you know, gauging when they're going to pull the goaltender has been a bit of a challenge. We've seen them pull it two minutes, three minutes, four minutes in, in certain cases. But I think if Elk River can maintain some possession, we're going to see Esprim come off for that extra attacker and that one final push. But uh, time is of the essence. As if uh, going against Eden Prairie isn't hard enough, now they have to contend with the clock as well. You really do want possession uh, when you get that goaltender. Back up into the neutral zone it goes. Here comes Jones. Right wing side, drop pass for Grain. Glad to see he's no harm, no foul there. Right wing side they go. Michaelis, there goes Esperim off the ice. Now the extra attacker is on. Eagles from center. Nice little play. Jones, oh, pickpocketed by Brockman. Mark the tape. We're under one minute remaining in the third period right now. That's off a stick as it rolls up to the line. Poke to center, down goes Jones. Eagles want a penalty, they're not gonna get it as it's gonna be handled to the near side by Foss. In front of the bench area, Eagles clogging up the neutral zone, doing a nice job, not giving the Elks opportunity to transition. Again, it's Foss with it. Gets to the center red, he's gonna chip it to the corner. Irwin with Langfells on the back line. Four check ensues. Lesko is there, he's gonna go high in the air. Does not hit the ceiling, bounding puck. It's gonna make it for an icing call. 
didn't quite uh, get the soft lie he was looking for there. No, you are correct. Look at this right here. That's boy, that's a great pickoff right that's, there. That's sticking with the play right there. Kind of a vulnerable moment as he got really kind of behind him, but uh, he never quit on the play, and that's a prime example of why he did a good job of, of what would have been a, a for sure goal with an open net and pushed the play back up the ice again. So a uh, solid play. And this is, I think, the timeout that we were talking about. This is a good chance to settle the kids down. 22 seconds is an awful long period of time if you're Elk, if you're Eden Prairie, but if you're Elk River, that's going to go very, very quick. So obviously it's paramount that they win the face up with possession, but they just need to get some shots on goal and get some traffic in front of uh, of Dietrich. Uh, try to take his sidelines away. Easier said than done the way this Eden Prairie uh, defense has been playing tonight. They've been giving their, de- their goaltender reasonably good sidelines, and when he sees it, he can generally save it. But uh, the challenge, obviously, is is in front of the Elks, and it's a, and it's a big challenge. It's certainly something they could rise to the occasion, but but Eden Prairie, the way they're... I'd like to point that out. <laughs> yeah, well, if you look at it, Pete, it's early you neuter, enough... You neuter the line changes. I mean, you can't, you, get the last, you can't get the last change. You know, these coaches, they love to uh, work their little... Uh, Little matchups. Yeah, and, and Lee Smith is one of the better ones at that. But normally people are matching lines against Lee as opposed to Lee matching lines. I think they're going to run them and roll them and, and see how it goes. But it, it promises to be a nice night of hockey. But early in the season, I always kind of take a, a chance to reflect and look back at the at the players that, like Elk River, has lost. Uh, they lost Max, Max Michaelis, Connor Bazal, Bouton Horn, Jax Murray. And then on the back line, Benton Moss and Nick Perbett. And then a goal, you have Benny Myers that graduated as well. So they have some holes to fill, but they're doing a pretty good job of doing that, Pete. They're averaging almost 50 shots on goal per game and averaging almost seven goals per game, and their defense is very sound as well. But they're going to get tested this weekend, and I think that's kind of the fun part to see is how they respond to that challenge. Once again, tonight's coverage presented by Axe, available at Target Stores. Follow us at My State of Hockey if you're not able to uh, check out all of the coverage of these games, although we know you do. Uh, we will be tweeting out the highlights as they roll for you. And also, don't forget about the state of hockey.com. Beauty status, bold character inspired by hockey lifestyle. Also, presenting sponsors here for this weekend and the entire season of live streaming. And Laura Stam power skating. Uh, train like a pro, play like a pro. Laura Stam uh, does a great job with her work. We'll be seeing uh, a lot of their things. And there's the tradition companies, of course, who have been staples in the community. And they're sponsoring this tradition, Edina Holiday Classic. Let's throw it downstairs to Pat Milan, who is going to uh, take over your starting lineups. Andrew Dietrich gets the start and goal for the Eagles. 4.23 goals against, 0.862 goals against, uh, say, percentage. Keegan Langefels will be joined by uh, Andrew Irwin, a three-year veteran here at the varsity level. Good player. And they're going to rely on that tandem to provide some offense from the back line. Jack Jensen will get the nod in the middle. He'll be uh, joined as well up front by number 19, Ryan Lesko, and number five, John, or number nine, rather, John Middlestadt. Slick puck moving sophomore. Yeah, indeed he is. It must be in the bloodlines. Kyle Esprim will get the nod and goal for the Elk River Elks. Well, 2.25 goals against average, .886 save percentage. Took a bit of a, a kick in the shins against that very good Centennial squad looking to get back on the winning edge. Evan Junker will be one of your defensemen, and he'll be joined by uh, Tayo uh, Larson, or Tayo Larson, rather. Up front, it's going to be number 12, Jack Purbix. Sends a left wing pass. Up the ice goes Bazal. Watched by Jensen. Irwin with an angle. Stick safe. Turned aside by Dietrich. Now the Eagles will ring the boards once again. That's behind everybody. And the length of the ice it goes. Ran into Matt Birch from the goalie coach for the Eagles last night. Sure. And I asked him uh, what he thought the weekend would have in store for them. And his answer was a very fair, I have no idea. Okay. Really, you know, Rapids, what they are, we'll find out here shortly. I mean, they, they come into the game with a couple of wins, a couple of losses. Yeah. They've had some lineup issues. We all know about that. But fact of the matter remains, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes down. Well, I think everybody's curious to see how they're going to do against the Dino Boys. It's kind of a tough draw first game into the tournament, but... 
But Grand Rapids, uh, I think their uh, their fans here are a little guarded right now as far as what they have to look forward to. But it should be an exciting contest. But we get to see the Edina Hornets uh, play against last year's champion. So uh, it's got a little charm about it, little draw. Gabe Holum in goal, as good as it gets. Yeah, he's, he's really kind of the, the backbone of that team. He's going to be relied on quite a bit for success this year. Short list for the Brimsek Award. Sure. Smith shovels high in the air to center. Played down with a hand there by Foss. Big check in front of the penalty box area. Boy, you heard all of that. Left wing side it goes. Conan tries to play that one to the corner. Not much real estate there to the line, but walking Argetsinger. Ooh, he's got a quick release. Look out, here they come. Back up ice. It's Mass with it. He got caught by Argetsinger, but follow through. Dietrich the save, they score! The puck rolled up on Dietrich and rolls into the back of the net. That's an example of follow the play, go to the net, we're tied at three. Absolutely, and it was a great effort by both sides on that one, and I think it was uh, Michaelis who scored that one. I'm not sure we'll have to wait for the official scoring, but but boy, uh, it was Argensinger that put a great effort in to tie him up, but just a, a, war, a war of will on that one, and Elk River uh, won that one. A good initial first save, but then the puck, uh, puck's momentum carried it in. But now we're not at a three, just 5.09 left in this third period, three to three. Pretty good speed, but you can see Argus Singer battling, battling. And I think that if, uh, if they could have had matching numbers, they might have thwarted that effort, but there was only so much that they could do. Boy, the stick went flying. They tried to do everything to keep that puck out of the net, but it had eyes. We're not at a three, 5.05 left. Taylor stood up by Will Hyde, energy to the net, Will Hyde. Oh, what a defensive play by Junker, breaks it up. Langfell's bounding puck, and a nice save by Asperum. Whoa, what a finish here. 4.55 to go in the third, we're not at a three. Like it grazed him a bit, so it probably just shocked him a little bit, but I don't think it's any any consequence. But obviously, you want everybody to be healthy and happy. What we're going to see from Elk River is, is uh, the defense are going to have to jump into the play if they can get possession. But that's the challenge in front of them is get possession against a very tenacious uh, Eden Prairie team, especially on the forecheck. Left wing on the outlet it goes. Back up through center. On the stick there of Lobs. Loses the handle. Now it's going to be Jensen. Now two minutes remaining here in the third. Jensen winding it up. The Eagles looking for their second straight win here on the season. Make that third straight win on the season. Asper makes the save. That was a good save. Absolutely. Argetsinger is there. Jensen plays it down. Bothered on the play. Argetsinger shot deflects off an elk up off the netting. Well, and I'm not trying to put a coach's head on, but uh, uh, out comes the Perbix uh, line with Michaelis and, and Simon again. So the big hitters are coming out. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a timeout relatively soon just to rest the ones. They're going to go out and uh, and give what they have, and I think I'm looking forward to probably a timeout to rest them again. But one big final push, minute 40 seconds left by this Elk River Elks team. We will keep our eye on Esperum. Yep. Offside at the line. Now down to minute 31. Well, you know, gauging when they're going to pull the goaltender has been a bit of a challenge. We've seen them pull it two minutes, three minutes, four minutes in, in certain cases. But I think if Elk River can maintain some possession, we're going to see Esprim come off for that extra attacker and that one final push. But uh, time is of the essence. As if uh, going against Eden Prairie isn't hard enough, now they have to contend with the clock as well. You really do want possession uh, when you get that goaltender. Back up into the neutral zone it goes. Here comes Jones. Right wing side, drop pass for Green. Glad to see he's no harm, no foul there. Right wing side they go. Michaelis, there goes Esperim off the ice. Now the extra attacker is on. Eagles from center. Nice little play. Jones, oh, pickpocketed by Brockman. Mark the tape. We're under one minute remaining in the third period right now. That's off a stick as it rolls up to the line. Poked to center, down goes Jones. Eagles want a penalty, they're not gonna get it. As it's gonna be handled to the near side by Foss. In front of the bench area. Eagles clogging up the neutral zone, doing a nice job, not giving the Elks opportunity to transition. Again, it's Foss with it. Gets to the center red, he's gonna chip it to the corner. Irwin with Langfells on the back line. Four check ensues. Lesko is there. He's going to go high in the air. Does not hit the ceiling. Bounding puck. It's going to make it for an icing call. 
didn't quite uh, get the soft lie he was looking for there. No, you are correct. Look at this right here. That's Eddie here in the early part of the season. Nice little subtle move by Jones. They shoot. Yep. Oh, what a save by Asperum. Oh, -ho! threw the stick at that one up off the netting. That's as good as it gets right there. And right I, we'll, out of the air. We'll have to see the replay, but I think that was Nick Nielsen that actually got his busy Watch stick in front of that one. Jones. Nice. Yeah, that was a nice move. Just a little delay on that one. Drew everybody in. But again, a wide open net. Watch the stick here, though, come across by the goaltender. Pink right there. Okay, so it, it was the goaltender. Nice, Absolutely. Nice recovery by Aspro. Bizal with it. Right wing side, Larson. Now it's going to be Green to turn this one up ice. Ran out of real estate, but quickly off the boards for Jones. Will Height coming over. Nothing doing there as Bizal will ring the boards. The big carom to the right wing side for the Elks. Offensive zone time now, not for long. As it's played back into the zone, that's underneath the stick. Nope. Icing the call. Well, I, I, I'm starting to kind of like the the junker, uh, Tayo Larson, uh, tandem on defense. Tayo has been jumping into the play late in the second period, early in this third period. So trying to provide an offensive spark where Evan Junker is mining the, mining the store and doing a good job of of challenging the Eden Prairie forwards on their breakout. So nice job by Junker on that one. Face off win, big shot from the point, misses the mark. Karam rolls for Mike or, uh, for the Eagles back up out of the zone, off the glass it goes. Jensen chases it down, he'll carry it up high. Gives off to Irwin to the corner. Irwin looks out front, ooh, that's off the stick. And Asperin was there to cover that one up. You know, I think that was a conscious play by Irwin. He, he was going wide, got a little got a little deep, didn't see any support out front, so tried to bank it in off Asperin. So kind of a heady play by the by the senior captain on that one. Almost had success, but uh, good support for Elk River in front. So no real huge threat, but I like the thought process on that one. Shots pushed to the corner. Larson was there. Look out. Lesko bothering him. Tried to come away with it. Back in, out of the zone now, Pervix. Left wing on the outlet, here they go across the line. Back down low for Pervix, tried to play this one through, poke to safety, rolling puck up high. Nice little wrist shot there from the line, that's wide of the mark by Brockman. Elks in the offensive zone now. They try to cycle out of the corner, in possession up high. Defensive tussle between these two teams. I say by Dietrich, the goalies have been big when they've had to be. Ooh, turnover at the line. Here comes Jensen. He can skate. Jensen with an angle. Scores! Off the glove and into the back of the net. The Eagles take the 3-2 to two lead. Well, you have to feel for Esprim and Goal when you see Jack Jensen with a head of, head of steam coming at you with possession. Uh, boy, that's kind of a trying moment. He got it into that area and then batted it again. But good shot on goal. Found eyes. But there you see that athleticism, right? Batted his glove and then knocked it in. I don't You'll think see that, that right here, bang, right there, and then yep. whack. And it didn't, it didn't even get to the ice before he knocked it in. Very athletic play. Third goal of the season for Jensen, 7:50 left in this first period. Eden Prairie uh, draws first blood. Great work, Brett Johnson, up there on the production. Absolutely. Getting it done on the replays. Eagles lead one to nothing. 7:40 to go. Pikowski shoots that one, misses the mark. Esprim watches it wide to his left. Sam Pager plays it back in. Now it's going to be Conan gets away from one man. He's being worked on there by Perry. And they'll work it to the Elks to the line, but not out. Held in. That was off the stick of Pager. And it's going to be the Elks to regroup in their own zone. On the pockets, Foss plays it to the right wing. Griffin Young stood up on the play. Conan was there, tried to play it to safety, and here come the... Eagles to center, big shivering hit. That one was thrown by Young. Back in behind the net. Busby watches his man as the Elks work the offensive zone. They trail 1-0 if you just joined us, as you can see on your screen there. Buzzed wide of the mark. Back up to the line. Quick shot, low one on the ice, wide of the mark by Perry. He'll head to the ice, or head to the bench, rather. Those lobs that went to the bench, rather. Perry stays out. Now it's going to be backhand deep by... Conan as they change on the fly wholesale for the Eagles. Elks try to stretch and take advantage. They can't. That's going to be Argetsinger waited at the line. Nifty play. Shot, pad, save. Big rebound. Puck played back into the center ice area. It's going to be gathered in and played by Schultz. Clayton Schultz. Argetsinger now. 
Plays ahead, Will Height in stride across the line, angles to his left, pulls right-handed shot over the top of the goal. Crane with it, plays it back into the corner. That's gonna be thwarted and cut off there by the defense with Hill and Brand. Now it's Will Height again. Tried to play it off the weak side, nobody there. Now it's Argett Singer, shot that's partially deflected out of there by Esprim as Will Height was all over him. Off the boards by Foss to center, across the checkered and deep by the Elks as they change. Dietrich will set up back in behind his net. Eagles will look to outlet for Will Height. That was up in the air about ankle high, off the wall, and into the other end it goes for a nice and call. Well, I do like the response from the Elk River Elks after getting scored on. It was a very athletic play that beat Esperon, but what they did is they came back with possession, actually got some zone time. But uh, very, very impressed with the way Eden Prairie is, is working the puck down low, but even equally impressed with the Elks uh, congesting between the dots. They really aren't giving him good looks at the, at the rink. It just took a very athletic play to get success. Rolling puck. Ooh, nice job to be pulled out of there. Irwin was chasing, and the bigger play there by Langefeld as they'll play this off the board. One minute's knocked off this power play for the Eagles as it's going to be Langfels to regroup back in his own zone. Here he goes with it, the junior defenseman. Looked up to the left wing side. Jensen will regroup and wind it back up. Oh, gets away from one man. Another carries this one low. Jensen, can you imagine if he was on the Edina roster still? <laughs> what that team would be like? Oh, absolutely, but he's, he's doing good Grant things for the... take Grant off. <laughs> Who's with Shattuck? Absolutely. I mean. A wealth of riches, but I think he looks pretty good in that uh, that red, black, and white. Here comes Pager across center ice. Plays to the left wing side. Middlestad with it. Carries back into the corner. Oh, Ooh, he's jammed on the play. Nice check there. He's up. They try to go after him there. Will Height did, and the length of the ice, they go with it. Pager's pressured on the play by Bizal. Pager's going to try and. Help it off to the right wing side. Pikowski, ooh, dangerous in front of the net there with Perbix staring on. Left wing side for Lesko as we're five on five. Shot and a save by Esperum. 2-1 your score here as we get now to the five minute mark of period number two. Elks outlet left wing side in stride. Ooh, here they go. Bizal straight line up the left wing rail as it's Pikowski watching him. Now Perbix takes over from the corner, walks out front. Dietrich covers, lost his sight on the puck for a minute. <laughs> well, that was Jack Purvis along the end wall. Just kind of cut, cut it tight, tried to tuck it in on the short side. Uh, but nice job again by Dietrich to close off that angle. Here you can see, just uh, saw the opportunity. Nobody in front, nobody to dish a puck to, so he took it upon himself. Really a good heady play. You never know what can happen, but you force the goaltender to make a, make a play. Face off win by the Elks. Played back in behind. Mass was there. Bump to the boards. Grain will play ahead for Jones. The Eagles are cut off. Nifty play there and sent right back in by the Elks. That was Matt Mitch Mass again making the play. And they'll chisel that one back into the Eagles zone. Busby bumped off the boards there by Mass turning his junker. Shot was blocked. Bounding to the neutral zone controlled by the Elks. They got to be on the short list for the Section 7 AA. Obviously, you've got Cloquesco Carlton in there and the front runners Duluth East. Ooh, Busby goes through the wickets right there in front as Simon was on him. Yeah, Cloquet scoring some goals and bunches as well. Oh, they got the Langenbrunner kid. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, I saw that. Of course, Hate to saw that play. name on the back of a uniform. That's been done many times in the next levels, but you know, that team, that Cloquesco Carlton team, very good at the Pee Wee AA level, Bantam AA. Uh, they've been solid, so watch out for them. But really it comes down to Duluth East, I think, and whoever else wants to highlight packages in the scoring summary of the first period. You're watching High School Hockey, thestateofhockey.com.
Now it's going to be Irwin back to the corner for Green. He has a goal tonight. Jones had Will Height there. Away from Will Height, Irwin plays it down to the stick. No hand pass, they say. Shoveled up through everyone. It's going to be Langfels, and Dietrich wisely <laughs> covers that one up. No, nah, that's a good decision by Dietrich. Uh, you know, gives him the opportunity to change the lines, get some fresh legs out there. But, but Busby, boy, you have to feel for him. He's in no man's land, kind of taken off from the blue line, and then uh, the lugs weren't fast into the wheels, and he kind of started to wobble a little bit. But he made a nice recovery play. But one thing you'll notice in overtime is the defense bail out of the zone a little bit quicker now. So, uh, you know, the pacing is a little bit skewed. So there's going to be a little bit more room if they keep popping out early. Uh, but it's the appropriate play. You want to err on the side of defense. Shot was blocked and slung back into the zone. Argett Singer is there. Looks to his left, now to his right. Outlets to Middlestat. Too far for Jensen. They'll play that one back, blue line to blue line. Elks will control, 2.40 to go in overtime. Young gains Eden Prairie turf. In on goal as Dietrich's there to make the save. Well, Griffin Young's one of the players on this Elk River squad that can score, but it was a good challenge by the Eden Prairie defender. Put himself in good proximity between the puck and the goal and really forced Jones to take that shot uh, a little bit earlier uh, than he wanted. Or Griffin Young, I'm sorry. Took that shot a little bit uh, earlier than he wanted, but Dietrich, nice save to corral that puck. Nary a rebound. Perbix the faceoff, turned and played oh. by Hillenbrand. That was offside. Irwin with it. We play. <laughs> we'll take a look at that. Now it's <laughs> going to be uh, Green with it down low. Oh, nice job to do a little stutter, stutter step. A little misdirection. Space. Right yeah, on. nice. Langfels has been a point producing machine. Very Bobby Orr like with the sweater number. Green. Those are for the old schoolers watching. He can if dangle, any left. he can score. It must be Bobby who Orr. Else, who else? Bobby Orr. <laughs> My favorite line of all time. To the line, Irwin's going to play this behind, 156 to go. Elks with a very cautious overtime stanza here. Don't blame him. No. Langfels plays it. You don't want to give up anything cheap. But both of these uh, both of these teams, if they see an opportunity, they're going to take it. They just, again, have to err on the side of caution. Here they go, back up ice. Elks with a chance. Dietrich to save. Pokes it away with his goal stick to the right. Now it's going to be the Elks off the end boards. Brockman was there. Left side, there's a shot traffic that doesn't get through as it hit Perbix on its way in. Now it's Smith. Cross center ice. Nice little pass for Pikowski. Couldn't handle though as it's traffic that gave him trouble. Now Michael is with it. Nice pass. Brand in the world and available at Target stores. Let's take a look at your highlight package. Indeed, and we have a couple good ones to show you. The first one in particular was a very athletic play by uh, the captain of the Seton Prairie squad, Jack Jensen. And it really uh, started with middle stat with possession of the puck behind the goal. Just got it back to Irwin. Nice, quick, efficient shot. Uh, workable shot. Good save by Asperum, but a very athletic play by Jack Jensen. Put that one in from a very bad angle. Tough Similar to a kind, of a kind of a cricket goal where he hit it right out of midair. Cricket. Wow. But that gave Eden Prairie a 1-0 lead. And that was at 9-10 of that first period. The mojo was there, but Elk River, a nice answer. They came back and responded. After the power play, it was the Elks that finally had this rush, and look what results. Yeah, it was a quick, efficient breakout, but boy, and then you blow a tire. Langfels committed a little early before they, they gained the zone, but again, the tire came out on that one. And, and it was uh, Dietrich that made the initial save, but it was just that puck had eyes, and it found that its way in. That was a move, though, from outside Oh, indeed, the end. absolutely. Tough one to defend against. He is an ankle breaker, I like to call that. <laughs> Very appropriate as well, but that nodded at a one. That goal was at the 12:26 uh, mark, and here's the final goal. That was Brockman that took that initial shot, and they're on the power play at the 14:30 mark. It was Ferry uh, that took uh, took advantage of that opportunity. Puck just got on a stick. Not a super big redirect, but uh, enough to be effective, and that's where we stand right now. Elk River 2, Eden Prairie 1. Coming out of the gate, I'm sure Eden Prairie wants to continue what they're doing. Even when they were man down, they were chipping the puck in, trying to get behind the defenseman, but they, but they were winning some uh, races to that loose puck. But what Elk River does so well is protect in front of their goaltender. So Espera might have seen some shots, but they weren't from between the hash marks. They were actually from poor angles. Gave him a shot. It took a very athletic play for him to be beat that first period. I'm, I'm sure uh, 
Eden Prairie wants to get uh, get more pressure on. Shots in that period, Elk River had 13. Not many times does Elk Eden Prairie give up 13 shots in the period. Eden Prairie uh, answers back with nine. Two to one, should be a, a great period. Long changes, get off the ice early, get the fresh legs out there and continue the flow. Get everybody involved. We'll face off from center ice between these two additions. The power play will continue for the Elks. A minute 29 on it, and we're underway here to start the second period. Game one of six here from the Edina Holiday Classic from Braemar Arena. As always, it's a great weekend of streaming. We'll be streaming a full schedule for you all season long. We've been well uh, underway so far this year. And we do have a boarding penalty uh, to Pakowski of Eden Prairie, so 110 left on the par play for Elk River. Who will break out of their zone with 16.35 to go in the period. That infraction came at the end of the first and it's going to be controlled now Bizal plays it up to the line now with it that's played down low that was Foss who is looking for the return pass from Perbix instead it's going to be Conan bothering him and now it's going to be picked up at center by Humphrey the big frame of course his lineage here in Edina with his father Mark Uncle Kyle. Uh, Uncle Kyle doing a little PR for him. Jensen looks for Lesko down low. Into the wall they go. Ooh. And here come the Elks out of the zone. On the tape across the line. Young shot turned aside by Dietrich. Down the boards it goes. That gets away from the stick of Pager. And it's Irwin who plays a long pass. Here's Grain with a breakaway. In on goal. Grain shoots. And that's a save by Esprim. Draws the penalty. Slashing the call, no penalty shot. And that's going to be on Brock Hillenbrand uh, for that slash. Almost a necessary penalty as he got in alone, but uh, I thought Esprim did a really nice job of making himself big just outside the blue. Didn't give him a lot to shoot at, but now even Prairie in turn gets a chance on the power play. 33.3% power play penalty kill for Elk River, 82.4, uh, so both very formidable, uh, but Eden Prairie gets a golden opportunity. 14.09 left in the second period. As you can see, Elk River holding out a two to one lead, but Eden Prairie threatening on the power play. Down the line they go. Brock Hilton brand goes for a slash. They find an opening. Back into the Eagle zone it goes. It's gonna be Dietrich to set up behind the net for Langfels. As he waits for the power play breakout to employ, or uh, Jensen rather with it across the line. He's gonna go east oh. west and Caught Smith in offside. Well, it was a pretty good challenge at the blue line, actually. Uh, again, using it as a natural line of defense. He stepped up, forced him to cut outside. Smith just snuck in a little bit early. 136 left on the penalty to Hillenbrand. Not a lot going on right now for Eden Prairie. They misfired a little bit, uh, cleared the puck down, but they're looking to get some pressure on Esprim here pretty quick. By the way, if you come out to the Dinah Holiday class, be sure to find our State of Hockey street team who will be on hand selling these great hats that I like to wear, some of the other swag. It's very nice stuff. And... You can also pick up some uh, uh, offer detail from uh, the Axe products right here at the Holiday Class. You get a $5 gift card when you buy only four Axe products. That's going on right now. We're also going to have a couple of samples for you to check out as well. Nice. Jensen with it plays this one down low. And they'll play this one back in behind the net. Irwin tried to pinch and one minute's knocked off this power play for the Eagles as it's going to be Langfels to regroup back in his own zone. Here he goes with it, the junior defenseman. Looked up to the left wing side. Jensen will regroup and wind it back up. Oh, gets away from one man. Another carries this one low. Jensen, can you imagine if he was on the Edina roster still? <laughs> what that team would be like? Oh, absolutely.
Whether you're a beginner or deep into the game, it's time to maximize your speed, your power, your agility. It's time to be the first to the puck and the first to the net. For over 40 years, we've trained the best in the game to skate better. You'll see the difference in just hours. No one breaks down the perfect stride like we do. New player or pro, you'll learn the same techniques as the Rangers, the Devils, the... Kyle runs right into an Elk player. Left wing side, here comes Humphrey. Hard shot and on goal, handled and covered up by the goaltender, Andrew Dietrich. Yeah, that was Humphrey showing pretty good speed, top of the left dot, took that shot. Dietrich made the initial save, but that puck started to squirt on him a little bit. But when Jensen was starting to ramp up and getting out of his zone, I think he took a, uh, a bit of a slash across the hands, lost his glove, and he kind of looked a little gingerly on that one, so we'll keep an eye to see if it has any ill effects on him. Big carom up to the line, played back in high slot area. Nice outlet there by the Eagles, Pekowski. Looks for Smith. Somehow it works its way up and out of play. Yeah, I think that was a really good challenge at the blue line by the Elk River defender. Smith was coming in with some speed and uh, just tried to backhand it off the boards and play to a particular space. But, uh, uh, again, the cutaways up into the Elk River bench faceoff just outside the Elk River zone. Learned a lot about the Eagles in their 5-2 win against Brainerd last weekend from the Eden Prairie Community Center, the North-South Classic. And it's you know, Brainerd's a very physical team. They don't give you much space to work. And the Eagles had an opportunity to fight or flight, and they definitely fought and, and, and showed a level of grit and toughness. I was talking to Coach Lee Smith with before the game, and he was very pleased with that component that his team brought. Well, and they were down 2-1, to one, and I think uh, it was four different scores. Middlestead had two goals, but I think four different scores represented the score sheet. That's not a bad thing for the Eden Prairie Eagles. Not a bad thing at all. Laid up through the middle too far, icing the call. Back into the Eagles zone we go. Well, Pete, if you look at the, the body of work, Eden Prairie, obviously it's early in the season, up 3-1 to one against Creighton Durham Hall. Uh, you know, had a 3-1 to one lead. Creighton Durham Hall scored uh, five unanswered goals, had a 3-1 lead against Hermantown, uh, two late third period goals, uh, kind of knotted that up. So that was one challenge, but coming back is something that they have. You know, preserving the lead is one challenge, but coming back from being down by a goal is another one. So they, they showed some characters, you said, and I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that follows Eden Prairie's program. Definitely searching for the identity here in the early part of the season. Nice little subtle move by Jones. They shoot. Yep. Oh, what a save by Asperum. Oh, -ho! threw the stick at that one up off the netting. That's as good as it gets right there. And right I, we'll, out of the air. We'll have to see the replay, but I think that was Nick Nielsen that actually got his busy Watch stick in front of that one. Jones. Nice. Yeah, that was a nice move. Just a little delay on that one. Drew everybody in. But, again, a wide open net. Watch the stick here, though. Come across by the goaltender. Pink right there. Okay, it so out. it was the goaltender. Nice, Absolutely. Nice recovery by Aspro. Bizal with it. Right wing side, Larson. Now it's going to be Green to turn this one up ice. Ran out of real estate, but quickly off the boards for Jones. Will Height coming over. Nothing doing there as Bizal will ring the boards. The big carom to the right wing side for the Elks. Offensive zone time now, not for long, as it's played back into the it <laughs> draw too much attention, but there you got the referee's, uh, certainly the referee's attention. I think it's Langfeld that's going to go to the box. Not 100% sure, or it could be Conan. It looks like it's Conan going to the box for that one, trying to plead his case. You don't win uh, too many of those, but you can see he did get the, the stick in. Again, a stick penalty. You just want to stay away from that. Sometimes it's hard to do, but now it's going to be four on four. A lot of, a lot of space out there right now, just 3.8 seconds. So obviously uh, this face is very important for both teams, uh, but going into the next period, there's going to be a lot of space to move. Perfect's tried to pull that one back. Couldn't Jones, nice job to get the job done. That'll do it for the second period. Deuces are wild as we're tied at two. So it'll be a four on four for another minute 28 to open up the period. And then it'll be an abbreviated Elk River power play. And then we'll get back to the five on five and look to solve something here between these two teams. You know what, off to a great start. Always great games here at the Donna Holiday Classic. Great vibe if you're a high school hockey player and you want to be scouted. Uh, this is probably a pretty good place to be. I mean, I, I'm i looking around. I see at least minimum 9 to 10 NHL teams represented up here right now. Not yeah. even talking about the colleges. Right. So. There's a lot of notepads out there. A lot of notes here, being here. Hey, taken. Let's say hello to our friend there. Hello. hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Good to get, see you. Nice and comfortable. We're going to give you a break. We're going to take a timeout. <laughs> when we come back, we'll have more coming up for you 
High School Hockey right here on the stateofhockey.com, presented by Axe, available at Target Stores. We are between periods of the Dinah Holiday Classic. Of course, one of the great tournaments in high school hockey. It means we've started things, and uh, everybody can take notice with these four great teams that are participating. And joining us now is Carol Griffith, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Robert Thomas Holmes. Carol, thanks for joining us between periods here today. So let's start from the very beginning. You know, we've all heard of Robert Thomas Holmes, but really, who is Robert Thomas Holmes? Well, Robert Thomas Holmes is the owner and president of the Holmes Family Company. And he has been known to the world as well as the Holmes Brothers and the Holmes Family Company. Well, our viewers can obviously see the, the incredible drone footage of your Lakeville properties that uh, Robert uh, Thomas Holmes have put together. Uh, that is an absolute gorgeous. That's got to be a crown jewel of some of the things you've done. Just uh, a very opportune time uh, for Elk River to put that one home on the power play. Now they have a 2-1 advantage. We'll wait for the official scoring, but I think it was Austin Humphrey, uh, the sophomore, and that would be his second goal of the season. 
Wearing the familiar family number 10, is that correct? <laughs> yeah. I, I ran into his uncle, and it was uh, kind of funny because he always thinks that his Edina number 10 should be hanging from the Raptors, but I think Walker might have something to say about Boy, that. Talk about a revisionist. <laughs> Jensen there from his corner. <laughs> Jack Ferry with the goal. They gave Brockman the other assist. And up through center ice it goes. That's poked away. The Eagles will look to forecheck here with Lesko as he's off the side of the mark. Checked on the play. Perbix comes away with it. Boy, he's logged some ice time here. Gets a nice return pass up ice from Young. There's a shot saved by Dietrich, he's going to hang on with 140 to go in the first, 2-1 in favor of Elk River. Well, not exactly the shot that he wanted to take, but uh, coming into the zone, he was challenged by Pager. Official scoring was actually Ferry on that one. I missed that only by a lot, but that was his first goal of the season for the sophomore, but what a big goal it was on the power play. Elk River, 2-1 lead. Eden Perry's going wants to finish strong, put some pressure on. They were very effective on that penalty kill, as you said, though, Pete. Right wing side it goes. Neutral zone controlled by the Elks. That's off a stick wide of Dietrich, who lets it go. Don't forget, coming up later tonight, it's the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks and Edina Hornets redirect. Deflection saved by Dietrich. Now the Eagles with it from the corner. Elks, good confidence off the four check here. When they get some pucks deep, they're tough to handle here. That one deflected wide. We have bodies going to the net, deflection screens, all sorts of trouble for Andrew Dietrich here tonight. He's gonna have to deal with. Mikowski tried to will the puck off the stick of lobs, couldn't do it. And now it's gonna be the Eagles with Garrett Smith out of the zone from the right wing side, left wing side rather. That's picked off and at center ice, gathered in by Bazal. Quickly dances from left to right, turns it off to the right wing side. They're going to send that one back in wide of the mark. Busby was there momentarily for the Eagles. Bazal now from the end boards. Delayed penalty coming up. This one on the Eagles. It'll be their second of the game. Already one for one on the power player, the Elks. Yeah, that's a tough penalty to take at this Here's juncture. Here's a look at it right here. Yeah, and it's Bukowski that's going to go on that one. Oh, he got, uh, he got his money's worth on that one, but really not a penalty that... Uh, that the Eagles want to take just 31.2 as you can see on the clock remaining in this first period. The benefit to it is Eden Prairie can put their primaries out, hopefully get through this period unscathed, but Elk River, what a golden opportunity to, to increase.